right now the only, literally the only asset we own, besides like business equities and stuff, is uh, is this car. <laughs> we rent we rent that place, and uh, that's it. We just well to be fair, we just got two homes in Henderson. Yeah. Um, which is like yeah, I know where that way. Is. That's where uh, my buddy Stan lives. The yeah. Rhino. Yeah. Efforting. Yeah, we, chance to meet him yet? I did. I did. We worked out. Um, he's fucking awesome. I love Stan. Stan is, is big and strong. Oh, yeah. He's still a monster. He's still lived to like a complete lunatic. <laughs> so I'm always like, what the fuck is he even bothering doing that for? He already did all that stuff. You already won. You already won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go home. He did a fucking sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. When was the AC? I like some of the diet stuff you've been talking about, too, because people love to... They love to complicate that stuff. They love to get into the mitochondria. Yeah. And make it just like this uh, ever evolving math equation that no one can ever solve, right? Where where we um, we try to have like as much Chinese food and uh, and, and bread as we can. You know, mm-hmm. that's kind of our and dessert as possible. Yeah, it's funny, man. I mean, because you've been. I mean, I started training like hard. Yeah. Uh, when I was like 14. Right. Started you know, really young. Yeah. And so I started like competing and doing powerlifting meets when I was 19, mm-hmm. 20. And so it's funny because like I know that I'm, I'm young, you know what I mean, big picture wise, but right. like training wise, it's like I'm, I'm on like 19 years. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's funny because I feel like most of the guys that are, have been in shape for like almost all their lives um, have simplified most things to just like calories and protein and lift heavy shit occasionally right um which is more or less what we've tried to do with our yeah the hard part is some people have gotten to be so unhealthy that they probably need to get healthy first in order to have the calorie equation benefit them a little bit faster and a little bit better you mean for like losing weight yeah just for losing weight like some people are just they're just their bodies are really messed up Mm -hmm. and they probably need to get used to just eating natural foods for a little bit to help them cut back on the overall amount of food that they're eating yeah you know and you get getting healthier and losing weight can kind of go together but some people are a little stuck sometimes after they lose some weight you know sometimes they lose 30 pounds and then they're stuck for a while yeah but i've seen that happen with some friends where it's like they are a little bit more stuck than the average person mm-hmm. but the answer isn't necessarily just to tell them to move more and eat less yeah because they don't feel like moving more more because they don't have enough energy because they're eating from so the food that they're consuming and that's where it gets to be like well maybe you should pay attention to the actual food choices a little bit more right because like, you're not getting that much from like a pop tart i was know? literally going to use a pop tart i was <laughs> yeah, like so yeah. like pop tarts versus potatoes you know yeah I mean? yeah like, yeah it's nice when you get ahead though when you get ahead it's like that everything really works really nicely and it can be it can be more convenient same with money right yeah. same with that's a good way of putting it put it getting ahead of it I was talk- it was funny because we had this idea that came out when we were talking to Stan um, that I feel like I said like have power to late and it was like uh, he said something because I was like I don't really train that much anymore he's like me neither he's like, he's like I train hard like once a week maybe <laughs> you know and he's like it's crazy how little I have to do to like look the way I do right and um, he said something like yeah dude just enjoy the fruits of your labor and for some reason there was like a spark that went off and I was like mm-hmm. oh I have a passive body right now it's like active income and right. passive income but mm-hmm. just translating it to like so it's like oh I don't Right. This is not like you've, you've stored away enough active effort that right. now you can maintain, you know, this physique with like pretty passive effort. Like I can still eat Twizzlers every day. And, and you've heard people before talk about like being a success before you are successful. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're, uh, if you want to attract money, you want to attract mm-hmm. women, be an attractive person. And it's not necessarily <laughs> like the look, it, you know, look can be a yeah. big part of it, obviously, but have attractive features you know if you have a championship mindset if you got yeah if you're willing to work hard and you don't give up on stuff easily you yeah. are willing to be foolish and like mess up and make yeah. mistakes i think other people find that to be a leadership like quality that they'll be attracted to and then money will probably follow somewhere after that yeah it's interesting when you look at it from a time horizon perspective of uh the doingness versus the like the getting side Right. Um, so it's like you are a success the moment you begin doing the doing and then <laughs> right. the having or the getting happens over a longer time horizon and so some people will 
stop doing the right thing because they measured it on the wrong timeline. I always find that interesting from like a business and or body perspective. It's like, yeah, I was working out and I was, you know, eating well. Um, and then uh, I stopped 12 weeks later. You're like, well, <laughs> you know, you're doing the right thing. You're measuring on the wrong time. I tried that diet. It didn't work. Yeah, right. That's what they always say. And then you're like, well, it's not working because you're not doing the work any longer. Yeah. Did it work okay when you were doing it? <laughs> it, sounded like it, was, it sounded like it was working for a little while while you were actually implementing it. And then the success discontinued when you stopped. Yeah. Okay. Just to make sure I... Let me write that down. Yeah. <laughs> Making sure I'm tracking well. So what's 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 what takes up most of your time now? Like, what's your what's your focus? Where's your energy going? Doing a lot of podcast stuff. All right. Yeah, I've been spending a lot of time. Um, I got two other co-hosts. Mm-hmm. We've been doing... A, the, we've been, I've been doing a podcast for the last maybe six or seven years. Mm. And uh, just I've, I've kind of circled the wagon with as many different fitness people as I can. Um, but the show isn't really, we don't just focus in on fitness people. I just like to talk to interesting people and get around people that are have different perspectives and, you know, learn from people. And we've learned all kinds of stuff. Learn how to walk, learn how to run. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. cool. Learn how to do all kinds of different things. Um, and just... You know, a lot of things kind of thrown in the face of uh, a lot of traditional training that I learned over the years. Like what? Reinterpret- reinterpretations of strength. Mm-hmm. You know, like what's... You look great. You know, I'll thank you. But like what, you know, what is, you know, what is strong? You know, what is like, for me, it was always just like a barbell. Like let's yeah. grab a hold of a barbell. That's the way, you know, the football coaches and strength coaches, you know, all our guys are, you know, clean and... 365 and they're squatting five plates or whatever those are the measures that we used but are they even decent things that we're measuring yeah totally. does it have any value at all to a football field i think it's definitely debatable yeah uh, can it be helpful i think absolutely i'm sure it could be uh how effective or are there other means you know to do do some other things i just find all that's really interesting and uh you know, when you think about someone, again, on their weight loss journey, yeah, they're like, oh, I signed up for a 10K or a 5K. Yeah. And like, oh, that's really cool. You're interested in running? They're like, no, I hate running. You're like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, well, wait, why are you running? And they're like, I'm trying to lose weight. Right. And like, oh, well, that might not be the best thing to like lose weight. So I find that like so many different things that we're trying to work on or spend time on are maybe not that effective of use of time in terms of what the actual goal is yeah and then trying to learn more of that for myself and be able to teach that a little bit more to people so they can just be more efficient maybe start out with a little bit better decision and lifting weights is a shitty thing to sell people on but i've just (laughs) i've always felt like uh i've always felt like everyone kind of has to lift yeah Uh, everyone is pretty broad statement there's people that might would you say lift weight or just resistance training in general yeah some form of resistance training. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was curious yeah the gym the gym is like the gym is in your heart you know what I mean like <laughs> the gym the gym is like for me when COVID happened it didn't matter a lot yeah. because I was like I, yeah, I'm gonna gym. do some fucking push ups or something you know I'm just I'm, even, you know, though I hate, even though I hated a lot of that stuff um yeah, I, I stopped going to my gym a little bit because uh, just no one else could go. So, yeah, so I was fun. like, this kind of sucks. Yeah. And then at a certain point, we just opened back up anyway. But How is that in California for you? Um, you know, it, se- you know it, se- it seemed like there was like craziness going on in California, but yeah. there w- wasn't really like... It w- I don't think it was any different than anywhere else. I mean, you'd go to the grocery store and people had masks on and... If you didn't have a mask on, someone would shit their pants, basically. But <laughs> that would that would be, you know, the extent of it. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. So, what kind of training do you uh, do you do now? I think this guy's a big powerlifter. Look at that guy waddling in. That's Joe Sullivan. I know Joe. Yeah. Joe's a fucking animal. Oh, that's NLO only. All right, we'll go this yeah, way. he's super strong. Uh, I do all kinds of stuff. Like uh, today, like I'm down for kind of whatever, but uh, I don't know. 
I do like a lot of kind of full body stuff. I have I have workout ADHD really bad, so I get excited and I'll pop over and do like different things if I see machines I haven't seen before and stuff oh, nice. like that. I just like that fun with it really more so than anything. But I've always been that way, even when I was lifting the big old heavy weights. What's your uh, ethnicity? Uh, Persian. Persian. Okay. Yeah. Now I was seeing videos of you. I was like, he's something slightly different than. <laughs> He's something slightly different than me, but I don't know exactly off. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I'll just ask him. Yeah. They have good good strength genes in, in Oh yeah. Iran. Yeah. They usually do really well in weightlifting and wrestling. Yeah. So there you go. That's Did you ever one. consider doing any uh any bodybuilding? No. Too no. Much, too much uh skimpy pants, skimpy shorts. <laughs> I just never I just never um I mean, Caleb knows this because I ask it all the time. But it's like, what problem are we solving? Right. When we're like start doing something, it's kind of your point about like right. the 5K or the 10K. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, why would I? What problem am I solving for me doing bodybuilding? You're just gonna go down and go up. Yeah, and like I'm not trying to win, and I'm not trying to make it a career. So like, right. all it's gonna do is detract me from the other problem I'm really right. solving, which is Thank like you. make more money or whatever. Hello. How you guys doing? What's up, Justin? Oh shoot, I actually don't have my little, my key fob. Can you check me in? You know Mark? You know Mark Bell? How's it going? Oh, Mark Bell, of course. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate Alex. it. My first time here. Do you know Mark? Oh, look at these guys. <laughs> they fucking scallywags sometimes. Long time I see you, good? How's it going, man? How you doing? How you? Great to see, see you. Good to see you. These guys are good. Yeah, I'm just checking in, man. We're legit? No, you are not. <laughs> I was going to say, okay, okay. <laughs> Good. You want to see the worst calves? This is my. Let's see. Oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Watch him embarrass me. Watch yeah, him embarrass me. <laughs> well, his whole body's that way. He trains around my time. He's yeah. like, he sees me coming, he's gone. Yeah. And he leaves. Yeah. You guys good? Yeah, we're good. How yeah. Long are we in town for? Just for today. Okay. Just hanging out with him for today. Doing a pod. Yeah. yeah. This guy, I'm trying to pin it down. See him. I see his wife more than, than I see him. Uh, yeah. He's been working on your book, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's the next. The next big thing, yeah. We've just—I've just been doing weekends for the most part. I come in like once or twice, and then that's yeah, like. The, the times that I go on show up, of course, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, dude, you got, how's your kid? How's your baby? Two, two and a half months old now. Holy shit! And, uh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's great. Six-year-old and two and a half months old now, so the mm. fun, fun house right there. Mm. And then she's gonna put up with all of us. Yeah. Right? Sexy guys in here. Uh, how's how's going, man? Sexy how you doing? guy right here. What's going on, this, man? This How you doing? This is like a whole new level. This is a 10 good. out of 10. Good to see you, dude. Doing good. Yeah, yeah man. Just for today. Oh, yeah, I Hanging agree. with him. Thank you. Sneaking in a workout. So for why'd you come now? It's hot. Yeah, right? I'm in the winter. It's the worst time to come. Ah, it's not too bad. We'll, we'll make it through it. We'll make it through it. We got air conditioning, right? I'll just stay here. Right? Yeah. I'll let you from Sac. You understand the heat. I get it. I get it. I am the work, like the most boring workouter. I'm like, I'm like grandfathers. I used to make fun of them, and now I do the same thing. I like do the same exercise every day. I do the same way. Let me follow along with some of what you, with some of what you normally do. So I usually start with calves because that's like. Let's do it. All right. So there's the machine, but I actually usually do body weight. So I genuinely just hang on this thing, and this is like my first. Is your first movement? <laughs> this is my first movement I do every day. Standing calves. <laughs> I can know. Uh, I can. I can. If you want to take this one, I'll go over here, and I can, uh, but yeah, <laughs> this is what I do. I'm doing the Alex Ramosi Get Fit workout. Got a book coming out. So your I try book, to go 20. Your book's gonna entail all this, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> That'll be a billion dollar body when the that details. comes. Yeah. It's gonna be here, the shot, make sure you get a shot here and a shot here. Oh yeah. It'll be the cover, like nice zoom in on the cap. Yeah. Hey, the calves are underrated, right? It's starting to burn, what should I do? Switch legs. <laughs> How many sets, three sets? I do like five or six, All right. to be honest with you. So I had like- Calf training. I'm doing his workout. Someone's gotta do it. Man. I saw you waddling out there. I'm still, still Very impressive. I've not, I've not ascended to the, the cardiovascular. You guys are fucking savages. The, uh, the, the high rep squats with the 520. Fun stuff. So yeah, I just want to come over and say. Might as well try it with 620. 
Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right? That, on, eventually, we were like, let's just keep incrementally increasing this each off season and like work up to like 600. So, I don't know. It'll be fun. What's the record? 600 for reps. Anybody know? I have no idea. We'll see. But I'm anyway. saying, I saw Matt doing 520 for some reps too. Like, yeah, yeah, crazy. I think you guys uh, have sparked that back up again. You know, it's uh, it's. I've seen Wedding do it. I saw uh, a couple of bodybuilders. I saw a couple of bodybuilders in Europe doing it. But it's yeah, you know, just trend setting. Trend so it goes. Somebody does something stupid enough, and they're like, oh, that looks. They're gonna fine. go from cats. We'll see someone come out of the woodwork and do like 30, right? Feed them. Grass. Maybe Larry Wheels. One of those mutants would be like, okay, I'll try it. How much was it? 555? Okay. Like 34. Some stupid shit like that. Well, cool. But uh, what are you in town for, dude? I'm with him for today. You guys know Alex? Yeah, I met, I met him a while ago. Don't like know him well, but just like, hey, gym guy. Other He's gym got this guy. secret calf workout that's supposed to make you burn body fat. So We don't share it publicly, though. Oh, oh, oh it's not. Sh okay. Sorry. <laughs> Same as five sets of 20. Like, I'm already, my calves are already dying. Yeah, I, I feel you're already dying. <laughs> right? That's the most calf training I would do in uh, probably like the past decade. So, Ooh, five by 20. Like, I get really sore. I can feel my foot. The foot arch. This is not good. This isn't healthy. <laughs> It's funny, I watch stuff like that and I'm like, I shouldn't really, I, I, like, do I not, like this? Like, what do this. I, I mean, I like yeah, it, but like, what do I, you know? me, because I'm like, do I, do I like this? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah good, right? We're like, yeah, I mean, I actually like, like it, I'm enjoying good. it, but like, do I like it? Like, it's kind of weird. <laughs> the best calf pump I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Even the lightest of weights is challenging. Yeah, right? It's a hard, it's like. Yeah, it's kind of a tough movement. Yeah. And then even just kicking your leg back like this is hard. It's weird, yeah. Just if you like, you know, like pull your hips in, it's like, I can barely even do it like body weight sometimes. Right. So this is what my goal is. I'm just curious. Look at, the, look, at the, look at the thickness of his leg. Look at this thing. It's so much bigger than mine. Right? So much, it's got so much more girth. The hammies. The hammies were really good when I went, did a bodybuilding show. Uh -huh. And that was just from years of powerlifting. You know, all yeah. those squats and kind of sitting back into the squat and not using the quad quite as much. Yeah. Really helped with the hamstring development. People are like, what'd you do for your hammies? I'm like, it's been squatting a thousand pounds. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just a thousand. That's all you got to do. Just a G, a K, if you will, mm -hmm. a gram. Yeah, people ask me all the time, they're like, man, Alex, why are your hamstrings so good? I'm like, well, you know, they're not. It's the tight <laughs> shorts. It's the tight shorts. I get smaller clothing. That's typically my, yeah. I go to top in the children's section and everything looks bigger. Count any reps or you just kind of go? 15-ish, uh, probably. You count money or no? That I count. Are you a stat guy? You look at not a lot of numbers yeah. for your business? Yeah. Are you a spreadsheet guy? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Well, Have like, you always been that way? Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm a numbers guy. It's more like a, I just want to, I want to understand it more than I'm like a math guy. I was actually not like that good at math in school. Um, and I think it was because like I thought I was bad at math. You know, like you make these decisions about yourself, like, oh, I'm bad at math. And then I was like 25, and I, I was just like, you know, what if I weren't bad at math? Because I used to like not do things. I'm like, oh, that's not for me. I'm not good at math. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? And so I uh, stopped using a calculator for like a year, mm. and then tried to like start just you know calculating the tip in my head and right, like, right. doing that stuff. And then um, and then I started getting like okay at math and so now people are like dude you're so good at math i'm like dude i right. wasn't <laughs> like, yeah i just well now it's also just uh <clears throat> as you get to be an adult there's just like more more zeros tacked onto it yeah. but it's still the same thing same like thing. simple math i think a good place to start is like uh maybe just work on like not getting ripped off and screwed over yeah. you know like <laughs> right. 
So that way you're not paying seven hundred dollars for something that's really three hundred yeah. and just little little things like that or having a at least an estimation or a good guess on how much something should cost, right? Yeah. What was your first business? So I'm actually writing the book right now. And so my first business was a charity project called the Free Print Free Training Project. So people would donate five hundred to a thousand dollars to the charity of their choice, and I would train them. And so it was like kind of a goodwill, and I got I got testimonials from it. And then that's what started my online business that was for profit. Mm -hmm. I used the testimonials from the charity to uh, cool. start the the for profit side. I started doing that. Um, I had like why 20, why did you make the switch? I I wanted to do fitness full time, and I couldn't. I wasn't making any money on the charity, so I. I was like, hey, I'm doing this for a profit now, and I got like 20 guys who signed up with me. And then... Um, I, like, I like that you made a change, though, because I think, you know, a lot of people, the, they, they try something, and then they're like, oh, this doesn't not working. Yeah. But you just made a small switch. You're like, I still want to do this. Yeah. But I'm going to provide it in a slightly different way. Yes, yeah, so I switched to the for-profit, and then um, from there, I, I wanted to get in. I, went, I figured the next step was just to start a gym. So I, I would do my online training clients on the weekend, mm -hmm. and then I would do my, I went and drove out to a gym owner in California. I was in the East, East Coast, and asked him if he could like, like mentor me, and uh, he said sure. And so I, I worked with him for like three months, and just like, when he went to the gym, I went to the gym, and worked from like, he did four to four, so he'd show up at four at the gym, and then we'd leave at four. So I did that, and then um, I started my first gym in Huntington Beach. Mm. And that was like my Very cool. my first business experiences. I don't know how aware, aware you are of my gym, but my gym is free. Is it really? Yeah. I didn't know it was free. Yeah. Oh, this is so interesting. Tell yeah, me more. Yeah, I started super training in uh, 2010, and uh, I, you know, from the from the jump, it's something I wanted to make. I'm sorry, 2006. Yeah. Started super training in 2006. Slingshot started in 2010. Yeah. But I wanted to provide the gym to be free just because it's powerlifting is a huge passion for me. It's what yeah. I love to do. And I just didn't want any, uh, any strings attached. I just yeah. wanted to show people how to get stronger. On top of that, I knew that I needed to find like-minded people that yeah. literally all they cared about was getting stronger because yeah. I was so deeply invested in powerlifting at the time. So I was like, this gym is gonna pay me back more and I could ever figure out how to get to monetize directly yeah. a monetization from it. The other thing that I recognized was I've been doing this stuff for so long. Yeah. I've run into so many people. Yeah. I've gone to so many seminars. I paid X amount of dollars to do yeah. stuff. And it's like, what are you going to pay me to train? Me? Yeah. $50,000 a right. session or like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, even a, even a book is a great example. Yeah. You're going to write a book. Yeah. It's going to sell for 20 bucks or however much. Cents. For the same reason. Right. Yeah, I just want more people to be able to make yeah. money. Yeah. And I know Grant Cardone's giving away free books and stuff like that yeah, too, yeah, right? Totally. Like, a lot of people do stuff like that because <laughs> you're gonna give me a hundred thousand dollars for this book yeah, yeah. that could make you ten million dollars a yeah. year, you know? It's like it's hard for people to get that, you know, yeah. in their in their brain. So yeah, I always wanted to provide a gym for free. I love fitness and, and uh, just trying to lower the barrier of entry. Yeah into any form of fitness, yeah. whether it be powerlifting or I didn't know people the gym getting was involved free. in nutrition. I didn't know the gym was free. Mm -hmm. I like love that in so yeah. many ways. Because it's funny because I, I made this tweet that went viral that's like, most people don't make money because they're not willing to wait 12 months. So it's like, you started everything with like giving first. You're yeah. just like, here, I'll provide, mm -hmm. I'll give, I'll give. And like, if you just delay the ask or don't even make an ask, like it comes back so much bigger. But like that patience is the thing that no one can take. It's the same thing with uh, fitness. You know, it's like mm -hmm. no one wants to give the time to get back the body. Right. It's so interesting. So I feel like the big universal law of success is just be able to wait. How many people come to the gym? There's like a few hundred people that come through there in That's a crazy. given week. Yeah. That's crazy. And so there's no membership. You just walk in. No membership fee. Uh, you have to sign a waiver. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't allow people to wear other other brands. Okay. I only wear a slingshot brand. Okay. Because that's what built the whole place. That's the out. deal. So, okay. 
That's you great. Know, and then everyone like, takes pictures and all that stuff that has slingshot on it. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. I didn't know that. And I, I even that. and I even don't really care that much about yeah. that. It's just like a general like house rule. Sometimes people will wear stuff. I'll say, hey, hey just don't film. Yeah, yeah. But it's just weird. Yeah. You know, it's like this is the brand. Yeah. And then you're wearing a different brand. You know yeah. I, mean? I think that's so cool. I like that. I know Caleb loves that. Yeah, Caleb loves that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, I'm it's, gonna do it's, uh, Again, it's a hard thing to put money on when I have people that have overcome addiction and people yeah. that have overcome uh, being bipolar. People have, they have all these things that they've tackled. Yeah. I call it lift through it. People have lifted through it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like, okay, there's definitely people that do monetize that and they got every right to. But mm -hmm. for me, my interpretation of it was, let me have this be free so I can really, I, I still feel like I'm getting more out of it than they are. Totally. And I feel like that's the best. It feels really. so rewarding. It feels so good to me. It's like I get more out of writing the book than anybody who reads it. Right, right. You know, I learn more about the topics I'm writing about than anyone else does. So I feel you like get it's better every time you write, probably. Yeah. Hones it's, in your skill, sharpens the sword. It's kind of interesting. I haven't really done much, like you know, honed in isolation work in a bit. So I'm already feeling these two mo these two movements that we did. Yeah, right. Right off the bat. I just want to have some muscle. That's the goal. quad next. Or are we gonna do another so hand? So I would normally do some sort of like full, like one more, like this would be my big comp combo, whatever. Like I'm a squat do. or something. Yeah, I don't do many squats though. Let's. Uh, so do I usually do one of the machines. So I have some back people in here. They got a bunch hey. of stuff. Hey, how are you? How's it going? So good to see you. So good to see you. Competing pretty soon or what? Yeah, ten days. Getting shredded, look at that. Yeah. What the hell is going on? Uh, hey dude, what's up? Uh, Joe and Jake I saw him, I saw him, yeah. I saw them like I, I saw them like waddling in like <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. I know that walk. Yeah, yeah, they're just killing themselves. They're today. I'm just so. in, in, in a, here today with Alex, yeah. We're I, I, I yeah. Here yeah. Cool. What are you guys doing? Just getting in a workout. Stabs, hamstrings, quads. <laughs> yeah. Cool, I'll let you guys Alright, yeah. see you around. So I'll usually do. I think a girl's deadlift of like 550 or something oh, like that really? before, maybe even close to 600. It's good to know I'm weaker. Yeah, stay out of her way. Yeah. <laughs> um, whatever. So like, whatever you're in the mood for, I love these. What is uh? But I like the leg, the the squat, what is this the thing? belt squat. Oh, belt squat. Yeah. Let's uh, let's mess with this for a minute. You want to mess? All right. Hmm. I'm not sure if I know how this one works. Yeah, I mean, you belt up and then this, uh, when you pull this up, this goes down and you slide it off. Huh, I don't know if I've seen one like this before. The reason I like this one though is that the strength curve, so like when you're at the top, it's the heaviest and then it, ah. it gets lighter at the bottom. Oh, interesting. Wow. Kind of has a built-in like slant board to it. Yeah. Too. Using my microphone. Pretty awesome. I like that. I like the feel of that. How do your hips feel after like all the squatting and deadlifting and <clears throat> my body's holding up pretty good. I'm like I've been doing a lot of running and stuff lately. Yeah. So you, I can't believe you run. I've ne I've never run. Yeah, I run like four or five miles almost every day. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, I uh, would feel like your your knees would just like <laughs> my knees would like blow out of my sockets. Because <laughs> yeah, you're what, two thirty? Um, yeah, I'm right around two thirty five or so. Yeah. And uh yeah, 45 years old. It's crazy. Just still holding up. Well, you know, it's funny because I was talking to Stan about this and Stan just like, he's like, yeah, you know, after all the weight, really had to rehab. Right. And I was like, oh, how long did it take? He was like, six weeks. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? He's like, he's, yeah, now I'm good. No pain. I was like, yeah. Jesus. That's just. I think we all kind of undersell, like, we have some nice genetic gifts too, you know? Yeah. Like, we like to kind of think that we don't. Yeah. To make it seem like we're cooler than we are, but oh, no. 
I know how hard Layla works, who's my wife. And if I, if she had my genes, she would be a freak. Right. Like, I mean, she looks great. Right. But she looks fit. But she would, like, if I trained like she trained, I would look like I'm geared out of my mind. <laughs> yeah, right. Because, like, when I trained like her, I was, like, 245. And, like, pretty late. Right. Yeah, Stan is definitely... Uh, <laughs> Another planet. A mutant. Yeah. He's a real mutant. Mutant's the right word. <laughs> yeah. Good workout so far, hitting up some legs. Got some calves, some hammies, working the quads right now. So your calves look great right now. I know. Yeah, it looks... Got that calf pump. Oh, don't mind me. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to show that to anyone. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, it's like a nip slip. You have like a calf slip. <laughs> calf slip. There it is. I don't know if you have. I like can't help myself but be like, there it is. More. Like yes, I can't sir. even like. Yes, sir. I can't even stop myself. There's no reason to. Yeah. Well, I've lifted with some people who are like really serious. They're like, I want to be in the zone, and and it's probably just from the days of like training and owning the gym too. Oh, it's yeah. like I'm always like, there you go, come on. You gotta keep you know? people motivated, right? Yeah. Because I. I also say what I want to hear, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. I like, I'm imagining I'm doing it. And like, I love someone to be like, easy, a little lightweight. Extra, little extra push is yeah. great. Keep yeah. it going, you know, like just, I love it. Up, down, squeeze. What do you I think of some stuff. of the uh, setup of this gym? Like, something I noticed right away, it's very bright in here, which I think is an advantage. Sometimes yeah. gyms are kind of like- I like the bright. Dark and I'm dank, kind of. Yeah, it's like energy. You know what I mean? Keep the energy up. It's a good setup with like you can see everybody. Yeah. Kind of no matter, matter where you're at. You're not like facing a wall. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because like there's three gyms that I go to in Vegas and they all have like different different things that I like, just like whatever. And um, like, it's like if everything else were removed, like I feel like the vibe of the gym is the thing that I come back the most for. Even if they don't have the best equipment, even if they don't have the best. And that like, probably comes from flex, you think? Yeah. I think Flix, Flix says hi to everybody when he's here. He's not better than anybody, you know. He just really wants to, like you have like, a, I'm sure it's super training, like a fostering environment. Yeah. Like, and he wants yeah, people very to- very encouraging. Yeah. And trying to like downplay like how scary my face looks. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yep. You guys see the face he's making right there? Kind of that mind muscle connection. You want to be able to feel these, feel every rep. Because you can haphazardly just go through these, but you want to actually feel it, get inside the muscle. Feel those muscles working, and then you don't have to always stack on more and more plates. That was probably one of the biggest things that changed from like young me to older me. Mm -hmm. It's like I feel like I make my light sets harder. Yeah. You know, and then. Learn to flex, yeah. Yeah. Because then, like, joints started becoming a part of an equation, which they never were. Oh, earlier. yeah. You don't want that I'm to like, happen. Oh, how do my knees, how do my hips feel today? Like, oh, not this. <laughs> right? Easy. Look at those quads. That's sweet. It's quad as a quad. Nice. So do you do barbell anymore? No, not really. Uh, well, I mean, I'll do it occasionally, but it just takes, it's just pretty time consuming, you know? Yeah, for sure. You gotta so. warm up and Add your plates. And yeah, I like to, I like to get into the meat of the workout as quick as I can. Yeah. Do the damage and like. Be done. Move on to other stuff. Stimulate. My gym is, uh, in studio. Like everything's all one thing. Uh huh. So, uh, I might like warm up, work out for 20 minutes, 
then podcast. Oh, really? Then get done with the podcast and like lift again a little bit. Uh-huh. Then I'm usually out. No way. How many podcasts a week do you do? We do quite a bit. We probably do like five. No way. Four or five. That's wild. Yeah. Has, has it been, is that, is that your primary channel for, is that for like growth and slingshot? It's doing really, really well. Our, our, uh, our biggest channel is a super training channel. Yeah. That has like 600,000 subscribers on it. That's great. But that one's really old too. So yeah. it's like a little deceiving. It's not, it's important that you have something that's hot. You yeah. Because half of those subscribers, they probably died because it's so old. <laughs> old, old power lifters. Yeah. Probably long gone by now. But they're, they're not even powerlifting anymore there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, they're probably legitimately, they're probably well, yeah. not. Um, it is a season. You know what I mean? Like, not yeah. many people do it for more than five, ten years, you know? Yeah, you're only going to do it for so long. Yeah. But the uh, podcast channel um, has like 150 or two, uh, it's like 200 or something like that. And that's moving along really nicely. And the downloads and stuff are all really good. The, the biggest reason I'm putting such a time investment in that is because I already did put in a lot of time on the podcast then. Yeah. And now it's starting to really click and sink and hit. And, you know, I got on Tom Segura's podcast recently yeah. and there's like a couple other bigger podcasts I'll be on as well that. Tom's awesome. When these Huge things fan. all start to hit. Yeah. It crescendo. They go all, yeah. It'll awesome. all come together. Maybe one more set of this? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, it's funny because like, again, the volume thing is like we had for my podcast, I've been podcasting, I think, since 2017. And like, no one even knew. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I was, I've been pretty religious about it, like two, two-ish a week for however many years that is. It's 2022 now, so five yeah. years. And um, it was only like episode like 300 and something where like the growth rate picked up. Mm. And so for like the first 300 episodes, which was like four years, like it was just like two, 3,000 downloads an episode. Like right. it just wouldn't, it wouldn't get above that. And now it's a lot higher. Yeah. And Caleb was like, dude, you're I number four. I think once people find, so <laughs> if people like your short for format, a lot of them are going to be hungry for a longer format and more explanation. They're going to want to hear from you more, you know? There you go. What kind of kicks we got on today? Look like comfortable shoes there. Look at them quads. You just gotta shave them. Shave them, tan them, and he'll be ready. Woo! These are, um, they're on Amazon. I bought like, sorry. Oh, it's okay. I bought like 40 pairs yeah. of different barefoot shoes. Right. And I just stuck with like the two that I like the most. Yeah. So I just wear those when I work out and then I wear Crocs when I don't work out. I yeah. dig it. I really love the barefoot stuff. Like, I don't know about you, but like my feet weren't yeah. fitting into regular shoes very yeah. well. The only thing I don't like about them is they smell. Ah, uh, they so they're wanted, like recycled or some shit. Yeah, so I, um, I wanted to find one that was cheap. So the ones that I have are like 20 bucks. Right. So I'm like, okay, well if I throw out one a month, it sounds crazy, but it's 20 bucks a month. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's like $200 a year for shoes doesn't feel too bad. <laughs> that's, I think that's what people uh, love about you the most is the math that you do on stuff. <laughs> you talk about like eating, eating out all the time yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It is interesting though. You spend a lot of time cleaning dishes and prepping food. Prep. And, but like cool. while, you, while food's being prepped for you, you could be doing something else. Yeah. Right? It's like buying back time. And it tastes better than my stuff. So. I think also too, if you have the money, why not eat? Like what a cool thing to spend it on. I can't take it with me anyways. I was, I did this, Yeah. I was on this podcast and it's like, if you think of, if you, if you take away all things that you buy with money that make you more money, because what's the point of making more money? To make more money, right, well, right. that doesn't make sense, right? So the only thing you actually spend money on is like transportation, shelter, food, mm. clothing, entertainment. Right. So it's like, and personal services. So like getting your hair cut, you know, getting a massage, whatever. And so it's like, well, how much does it cost you to hit those six buckets? Right. Everything after that, like there's no other, the only point is to make more money to make more money. And do cardio for the sake of doing cardio. 
this is me coming back from high altitude, which means if I had not been high altitude, this would be even worse. You tell that he runs, <laughs> and I don't. What do you want to move on to next? Yeah. Um, shoot, let's, uh, okay, so we did quads, we did hands. Cry? Sorry? Crying? Crying, yeah. Ah. Well, if you want, what I what I do like doing is, after this, I'll do quad extensions. Okay, let's do it. And just pump out, like, let's do it. quick ones. Yeah, like, I got that waddle going. Yeah, knife. <laughs> like, it's like up in your shoulders, too, for some reason. You gotta kind of walk, walk like this. Get that momentum. All right. Oh, this thing's torturous. I got one of these. The prime one. Torture I love chamber. This one. It's great. All right. Reminds me of like an electric chair. Yep. These used to be regular jeans, everybody. <laughs> Fucking blew them out. There you go. As you train for a long time, you can start to focus in on different muscles and different areas of the leg. Ooh. When you're newer, it's a lot harder to figure out. myself out of here. Yeah. Be too stuck in there. Thank you, I appreciate it. You can focus all the way up into the hip on the hip. It's not just the quad. There you go, Alex. Nice. Great set. Yeah, for me, it's been small changes over time, you know? And uh, how old are you? 33. It'd be so cool. Like, I mean, as long as you're like even just three quarters on target, yeah. you'll get a little bigger skin will get a little thinner looking like yeah. you'll just look more and more gnarly like without yeah there'll still be effort like the still... muscle maturity start like all those things yeah you worked out with stan it's like shit just starts the striation popping out of everywhere yeah. his jaw his his uh ma mandible has striations he's got like oh yeah yeah <laughs> he's insane he's the best Nice. Easy. Oh. oh. When are you headed out? Tomorrow or morning or? Uh, tonight. Oh, you yeah, are yeah, tonight. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See again, we're working all the muscles around here, all the muscles around the knee, but you can also start to get in up into the hip. And you can actually pay attention to each individual muscle. You might want to point your toes out or have your toes forward, like depending on what you're going for. Ooh. Yeah. And there's different ways to torture yourself on this. I mean, with this one in particular, 
We can keep changing the setting, which changes the strength curve. You could do drop sets, do partial range of motion as he was doing there at the end, like just whatever, you know, do that with uh, dumbbell bench press or something. And you're moving the weight, moving the weight, and then all of a sudden you're not. It's moving you. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. These ones always smoke me. But you, the, what you're talking about, the top of the hip, like yeah. here, right? right? I only took, I only started trying to go for that last couple of years. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was, I was like, I can't get, I couldn't get it to finish. Mm -hmm. And he was like, let me see you do some, I was like, oh, I was going, you know, like yeah, 90% rather than like, and then do that little. Yeah. And you can kind of angle yourself particular ways. <laughs> this is all this, to me, I think all this stuff is a skill set. This is a skill set to be able to learn how to go deep on this stuff. And I like to talk about a lot of these sets being like mindsets. Yeah. Like really dig it's into like the mind. Yeah. And you don't need to totally kill yourself. You notice that we didn't switch these up. We didn't do the drop set. Yeah. You're just going to failure and it's like, it's failure within the, within the context of we did three sets with not a lot of rest in between the sets. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh. Nice. Oh, I'm going to cry. There's nothing there. <laughs> like you can't get out quick enough. <laughs> It's like there's, it a, in. there's a moment where like the only thing you wish is that you were somebody else for a half second. <laughs> like I just wish I was that random person yeah. walking by. It must be nice to walk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you like black out. <laughs> must, must be nice to drive. Yeah, right? That's fun. What do we got? So now now I go I go upper body. So right, I'll do, do uh, back. If that Sounds works for good. you. Now I got my waddle. Right? My waddle is strong now. Okay. So um, back wise, all the back steps are over there. All right. I like the plate loaded. Um. Hey guys, I want to talk to you about Merrick Health, owned by Derek from More Plates, More Dates. Now, some of you guys are on a fat loss journey, some of you guys are trying to gain muscle, and some of you guys are just trying to optimize yourself and your hormones. That's why Merrick Health is so great, because you can get your blood work done. A lot of us don't know what's going on under the hood as far as our cholesterol, our testosterone, our hormones are concerned, and you need to get that checked multiple times a year. That's why we've partnered with Merrick and we have something called the Power Project Panel, which has 28 different labs. And if you do get the Power Project Panel, they'll actually be able to partner you up with a patient care coordinator that will go through your labs with you and advise you on what you should do. So, Andrew, how can they get it? Yeah, you guys got to head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. That's M-A-R-E-K Health.com slash Power Project. Uh, you guys will see the Power Project panel. And when you guys check out, use promo code Power Project to save $101 off the entire panel. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. So, we, they've got the extreme. This is our normal, this is our normal walk. <laughs> yep, coming through. <laughs> Good to see you, Joe. Good to see you, see you guys. All right. I do, do this, this one guy. normally because All right. you don't have to put as much weight on it. <laughs> How's this sound? Sound good? This weight or are you 45? We could probably do 45, yeah. I usually like, you know, if I'm feeling crazy, I'll do three plates, but usually two plates, well controlled, is like a good for me. There we go. Yep, yep. Yes, sir. There you go, yep. Let's go warm up. Ooh. Kind of hard to bend the knee at this point. Yeah. Like, gotta pick my leg up. <laughs> Am I in here? 
Right there. I like it because it gets lighter at the bottom. Oh, that feels good, yeah. Yeah, I get like a really good get squeeze. get like a squeeze, right? Yeah. yeah, it feels good. You can stretch at the top, too. I like that. You make these look better. You're Hard to get um, in and out of there at this point. You can throw a 25 on? Sounds good. Right. I used to get this like trap thing when I would like go all the way. So I like end up going like, and then I keep my elbows. It looks weird. You get like a little, little, little pain shooting through the trap. Yeah. So, so rather than fix it, I just decrease my range of motion. <laughs> it's going to work out great. Yeah. I'm sure if I do this forever, it'll yeah. be awesome. Well, just over time, you'll have less and less range of motion. Yeah. It'll be perfect. <sighs> yep, there you go. There you go. Some of it has to do with the exercise. Some of it has to do with some fatigue that we got going on, but you notice he's really like flaring the lats as he's coming up. Obviously, there's a big, big component of it is like being jacked. So if you're newer and you're trying like to visualize that, you might not see much, <laughs> but you can still think about kind of flaring that scapula out a little bit and just trying to keep the weight in your lats, which is a really hard thing to think about. <laughs> to try to think about. A lot of it just also can come from like just a lot of pull-ups. Like you do a lot of pull-ups, I'm sure you spent a lot of time doing pull-ups. For years. Not, right. not as much anymore, but right. for years the weighted chins was like the mm -hmm. staple. Which side hurts? Back back? Yeah. Second set was better than the first because it got warm. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like you kind of need that. We got a lot of nice machines here. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> Easy. <sighs> nice. Easy. Beautiful. <sighs> nice. Get it. <sighs> Woo. I'm sure you've seen this with, I don't know, different guys you train with. It's like they're working on their back and they're doing a lot of back stuff. Right. And then you see them do back and they're not training their back. Oh yeah. And so it's like, it's like, yeah, I keep doing more volume, keep doing more sets. And you're like, well, it's hitting your rear adult and your trap and your erectors, yeah. you know, or whatever. Rocking around so yeah, much yeah. or, yeah. So I feel like learning that from other people was helpful for me. Like older guys would be like, it's, uh, I don't I think you're using your back, man. Yeah, I always say like one of the better things I've ever seen in my gym is people take weight off the bar. Yeah. People say, hey, you know what? That's not for me right now. I need to actually go a little lighter. Yeah. I mean, how grateful would you be someone telling you that in business? Say, hey. I don't think like, you should do that one. It's a I'm really in over good my, one. I'm in over my head right here. Yeah. You'd be like, oh my God, no, no problem. I'm yeah. gonna, I'll help you out of that. That's easy. Oh, you're spending a little too much over here. Yeah. That's simple. We can cut back on that. I've never, but no one really, they don't. I've never heard that one. <laughs> That, that oh, parallel. Yeah, right. It's like I've been in the business size bodybuilding overlap a lot. I've never heard anyone use that analogy. Right. I like that a lot. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> Surprise, it's like it's not even the wrong exercise. You just got too much weight in the bar. Yeah. You're not even doing the wrong strategy. You just got too much weight in the bar. It's not your strong. Your great. Yeah. You're not like, trying to bash anything you're doing. Your intent's yeah. good. Elon, Ma you know, Elon Musk can take on PayPal. Other guys probably thought about building digital banks. Right. It's just fucking hard. That's a <laughs> right. that's a thousand that's a thousand pound squat. You work up to it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Nice. Good control. Looking good. Yep. 
Some really weird stuff going on with the shoulder. Like there's some decompression of the shoulder. Shoulder goes up, the lats stretch. The shoulder is actually going from right here all the way up like this. You can't really tell because his arms are going this way, but it, the shoulders are going this way, like this. And then he's got to do the reverse of that. So he's not just pulling down and staying like this. He's staying connected. That's why the arms are kind of slightly bent. He mentioned he's got a little, little uh, twitch in there somewhere, but like he's like this, and then he's pulling down. And the shoulders come down. And that's how your lats actually get big is from the stabilization of the shoulder. Shoving the shoving your shoulders away from your ears. That's why the best deadlifters have, they got a lot of distance between their shoulders and their ears. Arnold deadlifted 727, yeah. and I don't even think he cared that much about like heavy deadlifting. But look at the pictures. Look at when he's going like this and stuff, that, that shoulder is pretty far away. It's kind of got a slope, then he made up for it by being really wide, right? I think there can be variations too, like, you're gonna notice when I do this, I might cheat a little bit more. In my powerlifting career, I tore my bicep a bunch of times. So when it comes to back movements, I might have to get a little more English in it. Or sometimes I gotta just lighten the load. Because I can't can sometimes no longer do the exercise the right way. a really cool right back piece right there yeah it's really I like nice because it, it takes so little weight you know what i mean like yeah, you, can put, you, get, you know like if i go on the get to your top set quick yeah i go on the single arm uh the right. chest supported it's like i you know it takes <laughs> right. gotta put five plates on every side you know it's yeah. just a different lever you want to do one more here or do you want to call it <laughs> uh let's do one with maybe lighter weight okay hit up a little bit more reps all right joe we get it you're stronger than us. Dude, stop showing off. Yeah. I think he just did, um... Hold on. Let me pull up an old video. <laughs> Let me tell you what I used to bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It funny. was cool, I swear. Hold on, yeah. I'll load up on the... Yeah. I, so many guys used to ask me. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'd go to, you know, guys to just, like, mash their girlfriends to get to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd be like, bro. <laughs> you do it like five? You're like, Adam? Fives? Tens. So it's a tens? <laughs> You're like, that was a beautiful girl that you just shoved out of the way. <laughs> Look at that guy's chest. <laughs> you know what I love that at the trade shows, people would wait in line and they'd yeah. be all excited. They finally get up yeah. to me and they're like, man, I waited two hours. They're like I drove from Kentucky and we're in like yeah. Columbus, Ohio or something like that. They drove a couple hours. Yeah. And they're like, I've been dying to ask you this question. I always think it's gonna be like a life thing. Yeah. And you're like, I could just not lock out my deadlifts for the life of me. Right here, I got a sticking point. Yeah. And I'm always like, <laughs> I'm like, I, you know, I think it's going to be like they want something, be like life altering yeah. or something, you know? Should I do this with my career? You're like, all right, that's a good, I mean, that's a yeah. Like, yeah, right. I have 30 seconds to collect the information, recognize who you are, what your skills are, yeah, and right. make a life altering recommendation. <laughs> right. Well, let's do it. <laughs> let's get, if you're down, I'm down. <laughs> my grip slips at the top of my deadlift. I can't quite lock out my bench. It's like, like that's the question more? that you have, you know? Yeah. I'm guessing, I mean, for you, I, I, I probably have a more simpleton response, probably a more complex, you know. Oh, when it comes to like something like that, locking yeah. out a deadlift? I'd be like, do more of that. That's always my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like, do a lot of sets here. <laughs> yeah, just I spend more time there. Yeah. yeah. Just volume. Sorry, I've been, <laughs> I've been purposely dawdling to <laughs> yeah, yeah. give my fellow a longer rest period. I love it. Some monsters in here. Makes it motivating. There you go. Uh. 
Ooh, this just like my like inner lat. Just, just, yeah. Everything's like this. Yeah. Oh, when you first started lifting, what was it like? Uh, you start trying to lift heavy, lifting for a sport. Did someone steal your bike? I had what, a, what happened, bro? I had a teacher, big black guy, Mr. Givens. I was walking in the hallway, and he was like, he's like, boy, you lift? And I was like, no. He's like, you should. He's like, you got the jeans. And I was like, I don't know you how. You got a little swole back then yeah. even? Yeah, I looked like And he was like, I was like, I don't know how. And he was like, stay after school, I'll show you. And so he worked out with me every day for like nine months. And so he and I would train together two hours every day. You probably got jacked too, I bet. Pretty yeah. quickly, right? Nice. <laughs> yeah, the arms especially. Yeah, I was Jesus. 15. Yeah. Monster. Very cool. Yeah, I'd already been training for like a year and a year and change. So it's funny though, because he used to, he didn't have like the real names for exercises. Mm. So we used to do uh, I don't knows. Oh, and so like I a don't shrug, know. yeah, yeah. I don't know. And then he, we had tree huggers. Yeah. And so he just taught me, and uh, we did uh, sit-ups. And he had like crazy abs, and I really wanted abs. And so uh, it's a good way to teach somebody though. Like, I don't, oh, like yeah. how do you do? It? I don't know. And so he would he'd be like, yeah. "What's the capital of Zimbabwe?" And I'd be like. Yeah. And, like, and he would just ask, like, and I'd right, just be right. sitting there, you know, I'm like 15 years right, old. Right, right. And then um, we did, uh, he called them Givens Ups. So it was like a mechanical drop set for abs. Still to this day, the most sore I've been on abs. Kills you. Yeah, so you would, um, you know the, the abs thing where you can, you can hold behind your head? Mm -hmm. So what we do is, it's first, when you first start with him, he starts you flat. And then every oh, like yeah. four weeks, he bump it one degree. Oh, man. And so what we do is we do um, 10 to 20 straight up like this, like butt off, holding the thing. So you're like straight up. And then, um, and then we would do, uh, 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 like your legs would be straight. Yeah, yeah, like And you go up and down. Yep. And then you bend your knees oh, and shit. roll your knees to your chest. And so you do like 10, 10, 10 at that incline. And we do like three sets. And dude, like, I couldn't like laugh. You know, I could That's really breathe. Killer. Not that that, you know, I'm obviously I had the low enough body fat, it worked, but you, uh, lift, I had abs. You lift this way three times a week? Twice a week? Right now, twice a week, but when I'm like training, training, it'll be like five minutes a week. Yeah. I just do this, I do the same exercises. So I'll do lats tomorrow, same. And, and you don't care, like if someone's in the way, you just go do something else? Yeah, yeah. So you might miss a movement because like just yeah. time or if whatever. If somebody was here, I would have been like, let's just do those. Ah, I'll go over here. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. What's the difference? Yeah, I'm not a Nazi about it. Okay. So they're on that, so that would have been what I would have done. Yeah. So, um, I, you good with a- uh, Do some I, bicep, tricep or something? Yeah, we or? could do that. I would say we, we could do, um, yeah, I'll ask how many sets they got. Yeah. What do you, what, I'll, t I'll tell you what I do, but I'll usually just grab one of these guys uh -huh. and I'll do five to seven and I'll just go straight down. Just like, do, uh, yeah. I just Whatever. run the rack. I do that a lot. Let's do it. Okay. Doing it with curls? Yeah. Yeah, nothing crazy. Just see how this feels. My we arms are already pumped arms. is the great yeah. part. I wonder where the other 50 is. So maybe we'll start here and we'll do two. Yeah. Two, two. All right. There you go. To, I'll do that and we'll just. Yep. Oh. Oh. Yeah, for anyone who's watching, I um I got this from Kai Green, but he does the uh he does mechanical drop sets on these. Yeah. So he'll go like uh Two arms, and then start doing one arm oh, at yeah, a time, and, and then it'll go from one arm like this to one arm uh, hammer. Right, right. So it's like you just extend the shit out of the side, really, until your arms can't move no more. Yeah. No, but those, like if I'm alone, yeah, I like doing this. There you go. Requires a lot of your shoulder too when you're turning them over like this. 
You can see all the muscles in the shoulders. And some people think that some of that stuff's bad. They think you rock a little bit. Or, I think it's good. You don't always need to ISO stuff. If we want, we can get more isolation work when we're done with these sets, go a little lighter on something else. It's funny, my, my good buddy, Dr. Cashy, he's like, man, when people say, hey, he's using more than one muscle, he's like, I look at them and I'm saying, so you're telling I'm training more than one muscle at the same time? <laughs> Tell me why it's a bad thing? Right. He's like, all American strong man. And, you know, he's high seven cooler, mm. and he's got a PhD in biochemistry. Right. You know? He he's knows a specimen. What's going on. Yeah. He had a three seventy-five log press. Oh shit! At sub two thirty as a lightweight. That's nasty. Yeah. He's his ear, his ear to shoulder. His shoulders like below his nipple. Oh shit! He like he like is standing when he grabs the barbell. He's <laughs> you heard his deadlift, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna go down to forty. Yep. Yep. It's a good way to use up some energy right here. This is how Alex earns his ice cream every day. That's how he's still able to get in the, that bikini. That's all I wear when I'm out on camera. Layla's just, you know, honors me by not sharing it. Easy. Nice. It's funny you're saying because uh, with cardio, I like even when I got like peeled lean, I never did, never really did steady state. Right. It was always just like short rest intervals, do more work, you know, train more. A lot of times people don't need it. Yeah. Sometimes people do. There's some yeah. people that like have a little harder time controlling so, their food. Oh yeah. And there's people that are just coming from a place of being bigger. Yeah. You're dealing with a, someone that's really struggle with their food. It's a good idea to have the Eat cardio in more. there just to, yeah. you know they're not gonna follow the diet all the way. <laughs> it's also, it's like what problem are they solving? Right. It's like, are they training because they're trying to compete or are they just like, right. don't want to look the way they look, you know? That's the other thing, yeah, you gotta view cardio, it's a, it's a tool and how long you use it for. And then whether you talk about doing cardio, taking steroids, Give it a supplement, going on a particular diet, you always end up in the same spot of, and then what are you going to do? So, and then what? Yeah. You're going to take that thing, and then what? Like, you're going to take it forever? Yeah. Protein, testosterone, any of it. It's funny, because when you do something for a long time, you're like, well, if I can't do it for good, it's like, what's the point of doing it for now? Like, unless there's a re, like, unless I'm competing for something that makes a difference in my yeah. life. You're, you're going to... Uh, get particular uh, pictures done yeah. for your book. Or your business, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. So you're gonna get a little more jacked. So summer's coming up. Yeah, okay, You wanna sure. feel better. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll chop back some carbohydrate or whatever yeah. your method is, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've always said to be really strict about dessert. I always have to get it in. A lot of times I don't wanna eat it, but you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in doing the boring work. You know, clocking in when people don't wanna clock in. Right. You know, get that extra scoop. <laughs> you know, put the sprinkles on when you don't want to. Add the fudge, even though, you know, you could just use one another chicken breast. Do you, do, um, do you limit, do you have dessert? Like, do you have like a little bit of a... I eat, if I'm hungry, I eat more. If I, I'm less hungry, I eat less. Yeah. Really, I'm, honestly. Gib sees me take down a whole, <laughs> whole big old slice of cheesecake, and sometimes it's like three bites. Right. It just depends if I'm hungry or not. Which is like not a sexy answer, but it happens to be true. Well, you don't really have a lot of, like, you, do you have snacks at your hotel or not really? Not really. Not really much of us. You have a lot of good other habits laced in there. And if you have dessert, it would probably be unlikely that you'd have three of them in a row. Yeah, there you go. Yep. <sighs> Yeah. Well, it's like I would rather eat ice cream than like nuts and rice. Right. You know, and like I don't have a big appetite naturally. It's fair to say that you're not a, like a food addict. Oh. Uh, I forget to eat. So I try and get my, because I'm, if I don't think about food, I lose weight. 
So it's like usually I get to the end of the day, I'm like, fuck, I need a thousand calories. And I'm like, all right, well, what do you got for dessert? This. I tell you this to anybody that's listening to this, either one of you guys, anyone that's <laughs> listening to this, if whatever diet it is that you're following, if you end up binging, then it didn't work. Yeah. So if you're listening to something he says, where he says, I, I have some desserts here and there, if you're the person that's gonna binge off yeah. of that dessert okay. that he's talking about, that's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about an all night binge, staying <laughs> up until 2 a.m. <laughs> because you don't want those calories or whatever to roll over to the next day. I know these things because I did all that stuff. If you follow some of the things that I suggest, intermittent fasting, a lower carb lifestyle, if you end up binging, it doesn't work. And a lot of times, it might not be that same day. A lot of times yeah. things creep in about three days later. Yeah. It's three or four days later when that stress settles in that you end up finding yourself binging. So if you keep binging and you're not dropping weight, you gotta be honest with yourself and yeah. say, this is not working. You might need a tiny bit softer of an approach rather yeah. than a more intense one. Yeah, agreed. It's just like, if you can't do it for a decade, don't do it for a day. It's just been yep. like, I love it. Same thing with partners, same thing with business, same thing with working out. Like if you can't, I mean, and that's not to say there aren't seasons, right? Like you have, you know, targeted periods of time where you do stuff that's excessive or not normal, but like the 80, 20, the 80% of the time, it's just, it should be something you can do without worrying too much. Yeah, we didn't, and Joe didn't drop a didn't drop a deadlift while we were talking, so that was a good one. So loud. Good. Does, he need, does he need to it. really drop it? I mean, yeah. how heavy could it be? Well, I mean, he probably probably might need to decrease the weight. If you can't control you it, gotta go lighter. <laughs> should be a four-second descent. We should talk to him about that. Breathe oh, in the nose, out the mouth. Yeah. There you go. <sighs> Alex Hermosi's <laughs> secret arm routine that has not yet been released. He was going to put it in his new book, but he decided it's too secretive, <laughs> and we got a small glimpse of it here today. You know, the biggest problem with like the YouTube follow my workout stuff is that you get snapshots rather than oh, yeah. Yeah, seasons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like. Like we could do arms for five hours, it's not gonna make our arms bigger. You know what I mean? Right, it's like right. the fact that we did arms first every day for six months, <laughs> right. even if we did five sets. Right. But we did it every day for six months arms. Right, right. It's kind of that's like a business parallel. It's like you make a thousand phone calls in two days, and then you don't call anybody for six months. It's like your business isn't gonna grow, to grow, but you make thirty a day every day for six months, it'll probably grow. At the end of the day, it still always comes down to volume. It's just you can always do more volume over time. You know, it's like if yeah. you work out 365 right. workouts at five sets, so you got 1,500 sets in, mm -hmm. versus like I did 20 sets of arms two days a week for a month. It's like that's 160. Well, I, you know, 10 times the total volume doesn't matter. Okay. Well, we're killing these too. Like these are like, yeah. It's not until we're like going completely blind and falling on the ground, but it's getting close. Yeah. Uh, you want to do shoulder shoulders? Press? Yep. Oh, over here, right? There's calves. We got some people complaining. You guys are dropping the weights over here. Oh yeah. 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 If you could put them down slower. Are, are you a Hormozy? Yeah. That's what I. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was like Alex. Alex, the guy in jeans shorts at the gym. And then I was like, somebody was like, oh, he's a business coach, and I'm like, wait. Oh fuck. Okay. <laughs> cool. So I got it now. Fucking took me a minute to connect the dots. You guys are maniacs. These guys, they came to my gym, yeah, and they just, they they always fucking bring it, training their faces off. I mean, I like to work out hard, but not like this. Yeah, we're still we're still in the thick of it, you know? You, yeah, you did true. this shit like 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Like, we're, we still got... We're still in the middle, yeah. Yeah, so... We'll You're in the thick. Fuck yourselves okay. up, but not too bad, you know what yeah. I mean? I have the, the world record in the squat, so that's yeah. why I'm fucking so dense. Like, I, I get shit out on a bodybuilding thing. Yeah. But I'm really great under the squat bar, so. You did you do in bodybuilding, right? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, did, right. I just trained like it for a while. And okay, I'm going to have him take me through a bodybuilding prep. So oh, probably not for like a year and a half, two years now. Did you see his yeah. bench? Yeah. yeah, the bench yeah. is coming back. Yeah, dude, 496. So, That's on, amazing. On this, I don't, is this your video or Alex's video? It's both. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, 
I went on, the pod, on his podcast a while ago, and like I got herniated, two herniated discs in 2018. From the podcast? From, uh, from the- uh, It's a tough yeah. podcast. Yeah. It's a tough show. I feel yeah. yeah. I uh, <laughs> compressed the nerve, so my bench dropped from like uh, 570 yeah. to like 225. Mm-hmm. Been working back up. I work with Jake, yeah. and we're actually back at 496 as of two weeks That's ago, sick, so man. it's fucking awesome. Are, how'd you do that? Uh, I, I think Flex is telling me you did like a squat off or something? Yeah, I did, I did 525 for 20. Uh-huh. He did 525 for 18, so. Yeah, it's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. So, not quite. What was Flats? 27? 23. 23. Yeah. Oh, so, my God. Yeah. So, we'll just, run, we'll just, like, that's what we were saying at the beginning of your guys' workout. We'll just run it back and do it next year. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, you train guys, for it? Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. Did? Okay. you guys both have online businesses, right? Yeah. 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 That's, what, that's why I was like, I felt like an idiot because I, fo- I like your shit. I huh. followed your shit. And I, I, I fucking knew about you back when we were doing the glycogen super compensation shit. Oh, wow. Eating, like, eating the fucking. Yeah. Eating, Craig uh, Knuckles. Yeah, yeah. 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 That shit. Yeah. You know? And I fuck because I've been around for a while and I've known of you. And then I'm like, oh, wait. It's yeah, was it like a 500 carbs a day or something? 800, 800, carbs, 800 yeah. carbs a day. Greg lived with me and he was like, same thing as Mr. He was like, you got the genes, dude. He's like, we can do some crazy Let's shit if we want. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, okay. So I lifted every 45 minutes, kind of like you were saying. So I owned my gym, so I was just like, right. I do three three exercises, no no rest, barbell. And then I go like work for 45 minutes and I set an alarm. And I just immediately go cold, set, set, set. And I right did 10 sets up. a day every day and i just like i, I, I remember the fuck we, dude i modeled like my diet in college around that yeah, it worked it, it, yeah amazing i went from like one 195 to like 220 and i looked look like a, all i just are you about to go yeah can we watch yeah all right we'll yeah, 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 do it i can't embarrass myself now right, so. go for it we'll stay out of your way <laughs> come on Bill, let's go there you go Like, uh, Notice his ear to shoulder length. This is a key. Oh, we were yeah, making yeah. a point oh, earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Good job. No, you look great, dude. You look like a fucking brick. I was solid. Oh. It looks like you uh, almost like outran it a bit. You yeah. had to catch it. it that's the, so that's that new oh, kabuki, the kabuki bar. It's like extra whippy. So at the top, it bends more, and you yeah, gotta like catch it. Be careful how hard you lock out, yeah. right? Yeah. You gotta go. Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's you gotta get used to it, but yeah, it's one of those things like. That's why we've been training on it, because we got a, a competition in 10 weeks. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's go, Jake. On, there you go. Go. Nice. Ooh, good. Nice. And Jake's a really natural deadlifter. Like, I'm strength to squat, his is deadlift, so. That's great. Yeah, but he's a great squat. Too, so yeah. Like this. yeah. A little bit better. He's great squatting, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little bit better at pulling than I am. That's so. okay. 30 pull or something like that? Or eight? Just eight. Yeah. Just eight, eight. Five. Yeah. 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 Six. yeah. This year, though, eight thirty. Yeah, exactly. That's a girl. Yeah. yeah. All right, right so man. We're going to keep killing ourselves. Have fun, man. That's cool. Sweet. If I deadlift twice, I can do that. So, my thought is to wrap it up, we can, we can hit this, and then yep. I'll, I'll do the tricep thing with you to finish it off because we'll be. Perfect. We'll be. Um, I this is that. uh this is part of like these these things that you see everywhere. Uh-huh. This is part of a space that I created and then I wasn't able to patent it. Yeah. Because it's just it's a, a, band, yeah. a fucking circle, you know what I mean? <laughs> but before that there there that didn't exist. Yeah. I put that out there along with the slingshot. The slingshot's how I was able to make the gym free. Is that the primary um, business? Mm-hmm. Slingshot? Yeah. I got slingshot mm-hmm. and then I I created products around the slingshot to uh Again, lower the barrier of entry into working yeah. out. Like powerlifting hurts. Yeah. It hurts your elbows. It hurts your wrists. It hurts yeah. everything. So, I wanted to be able to protect your people. Your <laughs> ego. I wanted to help people uh, head to toe. So we make knee wraps and knee sleeves, yeah. elbow sleeves, uh, belts, the whole nine yards. Mummify yourself head yeah. to toe in whatever you need been, to. It lifts itself at that point. I brought you a slingshot too. Did you really? Like a little, oh, thanks, man. Yeah, we got yeah. And in our gym, you know, we listen to like a lot of gangster rap. Yeah. And so like I was just creating wraps because I was like, if you're going to wear a slingshot, you're going to be able to bench more weight. So it's yeah. like, it makes sense to use wraps. And yeah. I was trying to think of a name for it. I'm like, we listen to gangster rap in here all the time. Oh, I'll name it gangster rap. And everyone's like, that's so stupid. 
And that's how I knew it was a good idea. Yeah. I was like, you guys think it's dumb, I'm gonna run with it. You just wait, someone's gonna buy this. Right, exactly. So this guy right here, this is one, this is one of his slingshots and we make a bunch of different kinds. This one's actually called the money shot. <laughs> Color of no money. Comment. Color of money. That's why it's called the money shot, right? Is that why I got it? Pop her open here. Go ahead and throw that guy on. Oh, let's see this guy. Put your arms in there. Whoops, sorry about that. Nice and pumped now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now you can't even move. There you go. Right about there is good. And just throw just it up there? The other side. Is that where it is? Yeah, that'll work. All right. Arms are pretty dense. Let's go ahead and try a couple push ups with it. Oh, push ups. Yeah. <laughs> It's for bench press, push-ups, and dips. Oh, that feels nice. It's like a trampoline. Yep, and you can kind of see it's pulling his elbows in a little bit, so it's keeping the elbows in tight. You don't want your elbow to travel too far past the midline of your body just because it puts your shoulder a little bit more No, it feels good. So it helps with your that form, your technique, allows you to lift a little bit more. Like naturally gets you in a better, a better yeah. groove. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank yep. you. Let me just throw it down. Notice. Down there. Double XL is what he thought was appropriate. Yeah, I just I was let, like, let the record show. I was like, that guy's jacked. <laughs> so how weird is this uh, kind of newer company that you have? Like, is how weird is it? Acquisitions, like you're just so. But like, I get what I'm saying about like weird is just like Ooh. you've had to like work so hard for some of your opportunities. Yeah. And then now people are like, hey, like, invest you wanna, my business. You yeah. want to buy this or you want to invest in this? Yeah. It's definitely different, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's funny though, because I feel like if I if I track my career backwards, it was like, I got in shape, people started asking me how I get in shape, and I was like, well, this is what I did, you know, maybe it worked for you, and then people started getting in shape, and started having a little business around getting people in shape, and the people who got people in shape were like, dude, how did you grow your getting people in shape business? And I was like, well, this is what I did, uh, you know, this is what worked for me. Right. And then, so those people were like, okay, that's cool, and then I grew a business about helping people who help people get in shape, mm -hmm. and then from there, other people who help people do a certain thing, like I help hairstylists, I help plumbers, I help e-commerce people, I help whatever. Right. We're like, dude, how did you build that business where you like had some sort of like licensing, franchising mm -hmm. type thing? I was like, well, this is what I did. Right. I don't know if it'll work for you, but this will work for me. And so we did that. You know, it's, it's like a, looking at the neighbor that's always had something new. Yeah. They're like, hey, how'd you do that? Then they get something else new. You're like, how'd you do that? Yeah, and so I always feel like um, most of the things have happened like organically, where it's like right. if you do a good job at the thing, enough people be like, Hey, how'd you do that? And I'm like, that's what I did, you know? And so that's that's right. what we've done. Cool. That's what worked for me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. <sighs> Such a convenient machine. I love this thing. Oh, dude, I'm a big Viking press fan. Like, huge Viking press fan. They just feel good for me. I don't know why. I like it's unilateral too. That's pretty nice. Yeah. You can um, see the imbalances if you've got it. I don't think I've ever used one like that before. Yeah, because a lot of Vikings are, uh, are bilateral. Yeah. Two plates? Sure. Uh -huh. Fucking Joe. Make it so get much it, noise. Joe. Good Strong. dude, man. He's, Joe, if you're watching this, we get it. Yeah. We saw it. It yeah. was heavy. We were there. What do you think about like uh, Planet Fitness marketing, like the Lunk Alarm and stuff? I mean, I hate it from a uh being the target market that they don't want to be there, so that makes sense. Right. I'm supposed to not like it. <laughs> On the, from a business model. Probably helps model, generate money though, huh? From a business model perspective, it's brilliant. So they think, they looked at it and they were like, okay, 92% of people don't actually want to use anything in the gym. They want to sign up for a gym and not come. And they're like, you know, we could have smaller gyms that have more members if Let's we get- talk bad about the people that are here. Exactly. No, I mean, like, legit. They're like, okay, the people who use the gym the most, who we lose money on a per usage basis, are people who actually use the gym. They steal the protein shakes on their way so out. So they think, what do people who use the gym use? Right. They use heavy weights, they use squat racks, they use chalk. And so they're like, well, if we eliminate these three things, 
that knocks out 80% of the people who are actually gonna use the gym. And so then, we can have a facility, sign up as many people as possible can, knowing they're never gonna come. And then we'll incentivize them with pizza. Legit. And they're like, hey, it's pizza? 10 bucks. I'm on your side now. Yeah, it's, it's 10 bucks a month to come here. Right. And if you just come and get pizza once a month, you already covered your 10 bucks. So we're like, what's the deal? I'll just come and get pizza. And of course, they don't come to the gym to get pizza either. But they just pay their $10 more. So like, the average Planet Fitness does has 10,000 members at 100 bucks. Uh, sorry, 10, 10 bucks a month. So for them to make their model work, it's 10,000 active members. Wow. And um, what they figured out was that you got to go easy on the exit. So someone's having a hard time, whatever it is. Most people, you know, most gyms like send you to collections. They enforce the contract. Planet Fitness took the opposite approach because they need so many members. They need positive word of mouth. So if people were like, no, don't sign up there. It was fucking pain in the ass when I tried to cancel. They sent me flexes. People were like, oh, I'm not gonna sign up there. They're like, oh no, they're cool. So you go there and you're like, hey, I don't want to pay anymore. You can cancel over the phone. They're like, no sweat, we'll cancel you right now. Come back when you feel good again. And so people don't feel afraid to come back in. And so they can go into a city that's got like 30,000 people and they'll churn through the same 10,000 active and ongoing. That's what they do. They just, people get motivated and sign back up and then they get demotivated and they just churn right through them. And that's how they took care. Like, I took bet you if you ask people on the spot, hey, like, I noticed you haven't been coming that much. Want me to cancel your membership? They'd be like, no, 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 that's okay. Because you give don't, up hope. Don't, don't do that. You yeah, for I mean? 10 bucks a month, it's like I pay 10 bucks a month for the idea that I might someday go to the gym. Right, right. I know I'm going to come in starting next year. Yeah, it's a different model. Nice. You want to throw a quarter on? Now. It's up to you. For giggles? Yeah. For G's and S's? So I was always a, a good presser. Um, I have short arms, you know what I mean? It's like felt comfortable on the pressing movement. Yeah, I've like, I, I like, I, ne I basically never benched. Even like my whole career, I've never really benched. And like I did that one thing with Greg, and I got, I got up to like 400 right. in like six weeks, just training bench every day. And then I was like, I, I don't, I don't, this isn't my, you know? mm -hmm. but like I'm a horrible deadlifter. Right. I can like bench 80% of my day. <laughs> There you go, nice. Good set. You know what's uh, I think really important about the deadlift? Uh. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I, there's not a single exercise that's yeah. like overly, you know, like of course a deadlift is can be a nice movement. Yeah. You know, I would just say like you probably have train like you've been training for a long time. You've probably done seated rows and oh, yeah. uh, bent over rows and yeah. probably picked shit off the ground and it's like yeah. do you have back pain? No. Like, so I don't you know, know Lilybridge, Eric Lilybridge. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I remember listening to some, some whatever, something he was doing, and uh, they're like, "So how much do you, uh, how much do you row?" And he was like, "I only do rows." And they're like, "All right, well, do you do a lot of pull-ups?" And he was like, "No, never done them." Yeah. They're like, "Well, what do you do besides deadlift?" He's like, "Lap pull downs." And the guys I remember interviewing really were like, "You got to be kidding me! Like that's right. your primary accessory?" And he was like, "Yeah." Works for me. But well, he also <laughs> deadlifts 900 pounds, right, you know what right. I mean? Yeah. So it's a good filler for him, right? Yeah, I just thought that was like, and I think somebody commented on that thing and was like, for every person who says, this is the exercise you have to do, he's like, I'll find you somebody who's strong right. as shit, right. he's never done the exercise. Well, if you're doing movements that are helping you to stabilize your right. body and stabilize your spine, yeah. you did all that ab work when you were young, like, yeah. and I'm sure there's movements where you're, like there's a hip hinge involved, but even if you didn't do yeah. a specific weighted hip hinge movement, yeah. I don't see anything to where I'd be like, oh, his back's real fragile, he's gonna out, blow yeah. something out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, there you go. Nice. Nice. There it is. I feel like as I, I don't know if you're the same way, but for me, I try and like, I, for me, it's like if I do more volume of something, I'll get stronger at it. And so it's been more like, what exercises can I do that do not hurt me that I can do a lot of? And then like, that's what I've like naturally gravitated towards. Like I can do leg press 
all day. And so like, I used to squat more weight, right? but then I started doing like 30, 30 work sets of leg press and my legs blew up. Right. And my squat went up, even though I stopped squatting. So I came back after doing a huge like leg press cycle with bands mm -hmm. and everything. Right. And I added 50 pounds to my squat and I didn't even squat. So it's like, I always heard these things like leg press won't grow your shoulder. I'm like, I don't know. Well, you're curling when you're tired too. And it's like, as ridiculous as that sounds, yeah. that's working your stomach. You know, yeah. like you're doing these movements. You're doing a lot of movements where your body's already fatigued. It's a little crossfit -y almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, some crossfit chicks, you see them like, they're strong oh, they're as hell. so strong. It's oh insane. my God. There we go. There we go, yep. Easy weight. Yep. Nice, good press. There you go. Is there a, is there a date you gotta be done with this book? No. Or is it pretty cash? It's not cash. casual, but it's, uh, it's done when it's done. Formulate it, yeah. Yeah, it's more like when it when it's worthy of the audience, I will give it to them. Mm -hmm. And like we spent the last like eleven months. Have you written a book before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, spent the last eleven months getting what I was going to say right. And so usually the writing takes the least amount. For me, it takes the right. least amount of time. Because like I've written this book six times, so I have six versions of this book end to end that I started and finished. And so this is version seven. And I think this time I got the pieces right. Mm. So like version six was like 85% right. And then I was like, fuck, in this instance, this part's not completely, it doesn't apply. You know what I mean? So I had to rework the model or the framework. For uh, people that are just tuning into this and this is the first time seeing you, what's uh, like maybe a misconception of you you think that might be out there that, that just because people saw like quick videos on uh, YouTube or a quick TikTok or yeah. Instagram or something? That's a good question. I feel like Caleb like a was a good idea for is that. Is there a too. couple misinterpretations, like yeah. two or three that? Well, I think one of them is actually what Joe said. He was like, so you're like a business coach. And I was like, no, I'm not a business coach. Like we just own businesses. So I don't coach anybody. <laughs> the only people that like I work with are companies we own. Right. So that's probably the biggest misconception. Because mm -hmm. I get DMs so all the time. So you more invest in companies? I, that's all I do. Okay. Exclusively is investing company. And then once you invest in it, yeah. you're invested in it and you're going to help. And well, yeah, then I'm yeah. going to do everything I can to grow the Because I'm, be I'm literally the, vested. <laughs> part of the team. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so we act, so we basically built, so acquisition.com is a business that builds businesses. So I was thinking, like, I look at Warren Buffett, who's a big hero of mine. And I was like, okay, how do I take all the money I have and then create a business where I can actively work on the business while also compounding my wealth? And so I knew it had to be something where I could mix money with active time. So if I make a real estate deal, I put money in, but I don't put any time in. So I, I don't have a lot of value out there. Like I'm not gonna, I, you know, I didn't make my money in apartment building. So I don't, I can, you know, conceptually I get it, but like, I don't, I'm not in it. Someone comes to me with, you know, 10 locations of a hair salon. They got a cool, unique model. And they're like, I want to get to 200. I'm like, we can do that. Like that's a game we are good at. Or if someone's like, hey, I've got this, you know, unique way that I help insurance sales guys triple their sales volume by doing these three things that's different. I have this tool that helps them. Then I'm like, cool, that's a business that- what I, I mentioned to Ryan on the way here. Yeah. I have these ideas all the time. My wife's like, pump the brakes. She's like, can you and I together, right. can we make that company better? And yeah. I'm like, I see your, you know, yeah. and, and like, how interested are you gonna be in it for how long? Right. And so that's a good question for people that are like thinking of investing, or if you have someone that's gonna invest, can they make your business better than where it's at now? Totally. If they can't, then it's probably not meant yeah. to be. So we look at the person, like do we like this person? What I want this, it sounds terrible to say this, but like, do I want this person to be rich? And I'm like, I want this, this guy, I want him to be somebody who's an example to other people because I want him to be rich. I'm like, I will help this person even if I didn't make money. So it's like, that's checkbox one. The second one is like, how big do I think this opportunity is? If it's something that serves a very, very, you know, can only get to 10, maybe 20 million, it's something that I'm not like, not that I won't help somebody, but I might not be as interested as something that I think get to 100. It's a bigger marketplace, serves a bigger need, whatever. Um, and then the third one is like, what's my unique value add? Like, this is a great founder, this is a great business, it's not my wheelhouse. But you can think of five other people that could help Yeah, I could refer them, or what we'll do yeah. is just say like, hey, I don't think that what I could do merits the investment that I would want to make to make this meaningful for me. So just, this is what I would do, good luck. 
So we'll give somebody, even if we're not going to work with them, like just our general plan of what we would do. Because um, like Caleb knows this because he's been working with me for a while, but like we're big believers in like, it'll come back. You know what I mean? And even if it doesn't come back, so all I did was help someone. Oh no, you right, know what I mean? Right. Like for free? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, like I'll die happy, like it's fun. So that's kind of the, the thought process behind it. Mm. I'll hit this last set. Piston. <laughs> Woo! Nice set. Smoked it. You wanna do one draw? Yeah, you wanna do the 35 and then burn it out? Sure. All right. <clears throat> Is there any other misconceptions? I was going to ask Caleb, because you see the DMs in the comments a lot. Thinking about people think that you're one. like uh, people think that you're like Mr. Krabs on SpongeBob. All you care about is money. Oh, uh, well, you know what? I've been I always, might not even bother you, but uh, no, yeah, I've always been really hesitant to say like I don't care about money because I do care about money. Yeah, and I never want to get into a situation where we're like he did that for the money. I'm like, yep, 100. percent That's what I did right. it for. So it's just like, what am I doing for the money? So it's like I have values, as long as it doesn't contradict a value, like I have, you know, someone's mm -hmm. like, it costs them a penny to make this thing they sell for $100. That's terrible. I'm like, dude, I mean, you price off value, not off cost. Mm -hmm. So I don't, that's just American. Because as soon as you say that a certain amount of profit is not ethical, you get into this really gray area where I'm like, what is, what's okay, 100% markup? 200, like, is it 201%? Does he, does he end up in the DMs at all or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do. Does he, yeah, does he end up big in the DMs? Guru. Guru, like, guru yeah. yeah. People calling you like a guru or whatever, but like... Yeah, it's like practice. business coach, mentor, guru, all of that kind of... It's just because that's the space, which is why we try to like very consciously say like... Just watch yourself. Oh, here. my bad. I was like, I, we don't sell anything. You know, like I don't have any courses. I have no masterminds. I was I almost removed, I'm still going back and forth on removing the tag because I have a book for 99 cents. Mm -hmm. Just because the internet doesn't deal well with gray. With nuance, that's the way. Like, internet do you, doesn't do well. Uh, you find yourself defending yourself in your DMs? No, I don't. I don't. You spend pretty good with that. Oh yeah. yeah. That's, not sure? my, oh, that's not my. I'm kidding. That's not I I lean more towards like. Yeah, I understand. Well, because it's like yeah, yeah, joking with people or, or giving uh, them good advice, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I get because I also get some some of the companies we have are in, you know they're founder facing you know they're face of brand kind of like you with Slingshot right? Like, yeah. And um, people give them flack and they're like. And they get bugged, you know, they get bugged by it. And I'm like, I always feel like you get bugged by stuff that you think there's a there's a string of truth in it. And so if I was like, Mark's got pink hair, he's a girl, you'd be like, I mean, okay. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right. Right. <laughs> but if it was like, I'm not saying you, but like if somebody, you know, Johnny over here, you know, rips off his customers and he, and he like has a terrible product, doesn't deliver support. If Johnny gets upset by that, and there's probably an element of truth there. Yeah, but if right. Johnny hasn't lost a customer and has net negative churn and his thing's doubling every month because it's all based on word of mouth, he'd be like, okay. <laughs> if he's known sure. for having the best customer service ever, he's laughing about it. Right. right? And so yeah. it's like, I think there's gold in the comments if you can like take the, yeah. you can take your ego out of it. It's like all the gold's there. Mm -hmm. But like, if you get upset, then it's like, that's a good indicator rather than like, I should get defensive. It's like, dude, you're right. We're that working on it. makes sense. Two or three people say the same thing. It's like, yeah. yeah. And I don't Maybe think, you should look at it, yeah. Yeah, I don't think humans biologically are meant to do what social media does on the plus or the negative. Like, we're social beings and so we feed off of um, feedback. So like you're a kid and you look around and you're like, what does that mean? And then an adult says, this is what that means. And then you're like, oh, that's what that means. Now, what they just said might completely be wrong. Right. But like, we orient ourselves with feedback. But then a lot of people can't take a thousand people in a day telling them they're a piece of shit. It's just, but like, Biologically, we weren't built for social. No, you know what we I mean? probably had interaction with like 50 people, right. 100 so, people in a lifetime. And if 100 out of 100 people you talked to said you're an asshole, like you should fix your behavior. Yeah. But if you've got a thousand telling you're an asshole and a million saying you're amazing, you still hear the thousand and it hits the same. Yeah. So I think that that's the, and on the flip side, the fame, like the crazy mania of like, you're amazing, you're a god, you can do no wrong. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's just as if not worse. So it's like, I think you have to unplug from the matrix and say like, none of this matters. Mm. Like all the hate, that's their worldview reflecting on right. me. And all the positive is like, I'm filling a hole that someone didn't fill for them, but it has nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? It doesn't make you any more loved no. by your wife. No. Right? Like by that's, that's yeah. what I share with people. Like yeah. I have some friends that have like, yeah. they value like, I guess yeah. what I, the stuff I've done. Right. Yeah. And they'll say certain things and I'll say, Hey, just to be clear, 
your wife doesn't love you any less than my wife loves me. It's the same, yeah. you know, unless there's other things yeah. we don't know about. But it's, it should be similar, right? Yeah. Your mom and dad, your family, it's as yeah. long as you got like a healthy family, like it's the same. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, not more, it's got more followers. <laughs> right. Clayton Christensen, who was a Harvard business professor, he died at like 64 from cancer. Guy like killed life, like two-time national champion, NCAA mm. uh, basketball player, Harvard Business School, then professor, did, started, founded big businesses, whatever. And he wrote this book called How Will You Measure Your Life? It was a really interesting book where he talks about like a lot of his Harvard Business School like friends, they only measured their life with money because it was the easiest thing to measure, not because wow. it was the most meaningful. And so he talks about how different ways to look at measuring because when you're dead or when you're 80 something, you're not like, man, I'm so glad I'm worth 10 billion instead of five. You're like, man, I wish my kid were here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so he talks about, you have your strategy. He said, but where strategy meets reality is resource allocation. So resources being time and money. It's like, yeah, where do you spend your kid's not going to be like, that was so sick. My dad invested in 50 different businesses. He won't, he's like, <laughs> he was there and he went fishing with me. You he know was there, I mean? he wasn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, totally. Yeah. And so he talks about like spending, um, he said, you can stay at late, work late one night and your marriage probably won't be different. Like if you miss dinner one night. He's like, but the problem is that they'll sacrifice that like today thing, but they lose the long-term benefit and they sacrifice that for the short-term benefit of the promotion of the recognition for a project. He's like, so it's always, and it comes down to the thing we were talking earlier, it's like short-term discomfort for long-term achievement. Yeah. People usually don't make that trade. They make it the wrong way. Mm. I'm gonna burn this out. 35 reps easy. I'm going for it. Easy money. This is how you eat 800 carbs in a day, ladies and gentlemen. Burn it all out. Lots of energy. There you go, yep. Stick with it. Shoulder veins pop up. Road map. Got a road map going. On. Exceeding expectations. Going into the red. Those veins right there, that's the um, this is the injection site that you guys have been talking about so much online. That's how steroids work, you get them right into here. You gotta get it right, right in, the, yeah. in the main line, the highway. You can wrap me later, right? So I get it in there. Well, let's get the let's get the slingshot. Yeah, That's what yeah, it's really wrap, for, right? Wrap it on there tight. Yeah, yeah. Did you tell them the story how it started? Like you were injecting, and then you're like, you know, how if you, I benched with this thing on, did rather I tell than tell them the story about how you started steroids. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said that's off camera. <laughs> well, they did call it the slingshot. Yeah, that's right. For a reason. Give it a right? shot. Give it a shot. Between that and the uh, sling pin. You know, but slingshot sounded a little better. We can get funky with it. Oh, that's great. For my channel, when they do that, it's actually easier to get more reps in because you give your off arm a little, a little bit of rest. You get a little breather. Yeah. So if you like finish your set and you don't, you don't have any, any gas left, you do your strong arm and your weak arm and your strong arm and your weak arm. And it gives you like a half second in between. Nice. You can also rest down here for a half second. Yeah. And get a little bit more. It's Woo! unbelievable the brand you've built. You're like, you've built an unbelievable brand. Oh. Like you're, I mean like, you're beyond fitness. There's like so many people like in the street, like you say that bigger, stronger, faster. Like, oh yeah. How did you um, like, dude, that was everywhere. I mean, it like it like. Put, I mean, it changed. I think it genuinely changed the narrative around, around hormones and, and training and. <clears throat> Look at how many TRT clinics there are. Yeah. Right. Like you really like, like you know when you think about like making a dent like. Right. I'm not that, not being morbid, but like, if it's all you did was make that one, like it changed the the scene. Thank you for that. That's, you know, mainly my brother, my brother, Chris, he's the director of Bigger, Stronger, Faster, but yeah. it was a family, yeah. you know, a family thing. And, uh, you know, my wife was really awesome with it. Like when, when I started talking about it and yeah. she was like, I was like, I'm gonna, I want to talk to my brother about this. Yeah. 
on camera, and her and I didn't really yeah. discuss it a whole lot. Yeah. She's like, I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. And we, what's the upside, right? We're only gonna get a hate. You know? It's all negative. Yeah. It's all negative. Yeah. Right. It's all negative. I mean, lying about it. Yeah. Even if you're lying about it, it still seems like the best way forward. Right. Because people have a hard time yeah. handling once they heard that. Yeah. For you me, can, you luckily. You can't unsay it. Like yeah. Stallone, Arnold, like, because I was, um, Caleb and I had conversations and it's like, if you look at the, the narrative that most people will say, it's like, I tried it once. It's the same thing as like Barack Obama and cocaine. It's always like Bill Clinton, like, I tried Monica Lewinsky one time, I tried it, you know what I mean? But it wasn't for me. Right, right. Uh, so it's like that always seems to be the only okay narrative to like check the box. But like, you know, I didn't know when I, wa I was probably like, I don't know, 18, 20, somewhere there when, you, when it came mm -hmm. out. I was like, I had no idea. Because I was like, oh, I thought all these, I, I thought bodybuilders were natural. I didn't know. Like, I really didn't. Right, like the right. IFBB, because I just thought I wasn't doing anything right. I was like, man, I got to work out harder. Like, Ronnie's much bigger than I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we still know the truth is that, uh, yeah. No one is uh, without hard work. Oh, you know? like, yeah. Still need time and dedication and all that stuff. And yeah. as much as people hear that, they're like, yeah, but it's the juice. No. And the juice is the juice, and it gives you a nice shot. It yeah. gives you, uh, it will help yeah. a lot in a lot of ways. But I think, you know, my brother, you know, making that film and my family being a part of it was the biggest part of it because a lot of documentaries or a lot of films, like yeah. anyone can make one. Yeah. But in this case, when my brother started to uncover about stuff about Balco and stuff yeah. about some of these other uh, pro athletes that were doing stuff, yeah. couldn't really find anybody to talk about it. Yeah. And he went to the producers and stuff, and he's like, we're not really getting good footage. No one's really talking about yeah. it. And he's like, maybe my brothers would talk about it. And the, the producers, they go, what? Yeah. He goes, yeah, both of my brothers, they're on shit right now. Yeah. And one kind of struggles with it. He yeah. kind of got some demons from it, yeah. or not necessarily from it, but yeah. he's got some demons, yeah. whether it's from that or from somewhere else. Yeah. And my other brother is succeeding with it and doing yeah. pretty well, and he's yeah. taking over powerlifting with it. Yeah. They were like, what the fuck? They're like, can yeah. we talk to them? And so they came and they talked to me, and I started talking about it real authentically. Yeah. And my wife saw me talking with my brother and saw the camera there, and she bolted out of the house. She was hysterical. She's crying. So we had a lot of conversation. I was like, yeah. I really, I know that you might not think that this is going to land anywhere. Yeah. But can you trust me? I have a really strong. You got to keep in mind, like we're losing our house. Like yeah. we had nothing. She had no reason to believe in me. Yeah. I was like, I need you to believe in me for this. I yeah. actually think that this is going to make a difference. She's like, Why are you the guy? Yeah. Like, why, why are you like? Let someone else ruin their lives. Why are you going to yeah. take like the bullets? I said. I said, from the information I have, yeah. it's a documentary. It's a movie. Yeah. So, from what they said, I can't get arrested or anything. Yeah. Someone can't take legal action. I'm not going to show a shot on right, camera. Yeah. So there's not going to be much of that kind of shit going yeah. on. Yeah. She was like, all right, fuck it. You know, yeah. go for it. And how did it, so was it, did you guys, um, did you guys sign with the network and then they fronted money? Like, I just don't even know how it works. Mm -hmm. They front money to make the thing and then they distribute it? My brother raised like around $2 million to no get way. it going. I had no idea. Yeah. That's crazy. Back before like yeah. GoFundMe and like yeah. popular nuts. internet stuff that made it easy. No way. I did not know that. This and, is great. This is so interesting for me. And uh, Alex Bono was one of the producers of it. Uh -huh. He ended up working for like SNL and like he's done a lot of very professional stuff. So like he's always conducted himself in a real professional way and always kind of knew how to go about doing stuff. Him and his wife were producers on the movie. Yeah. So they also knew how to, uh, how to raise some funds and raise some money. But Mark Cuban ultimately no ended up way. buying it. Seriously? I, dude, I didn't know yeah. any of this stuff. Yeah, so, Mark Cuban bought it, and Mark Cuban owns, he owns uh, movie theaters. Uh -huh. So that's how I was able to get into movie theaters nationwide. No way. And again, it's before like Netflix and all this stuff. I watched it on YouTube, I think. Stuff, yeah. I think that's where I ended up watching it. Yeah. Hopefully, you got paid something for it. I don't know. I, yeah, like yeah. My buddy, my, like, my powerlifting buddy's like, dude, you got to watch this right. movie. And I was like, he's like, dude, apparently like a lot of people take steroids. Right. He's like, dude, Olympians take steroids. I was like, what? Right. <laughs> I remember, um, like Dr. Cash, he's my close friend. Like he did a lot of these. The story hasn't died. You know, it's still strong. Dude, it's still, yeah, it's bigger, stronger, faster. It's still <laughs> yeah. going. It's just crazy that um, it was so, it, there was such a vacuum and it was such a hush hush, like so many people and no one was talking about it. It's kind of like, um, so I don't know if you've seen on TikTok, like the Pornhub, like, like whatever the, the thing is, it's like they, they show all these scenes where like someone just plays the, the, little, the little jingle on their phone 
and like the whole class stops and looks. And it's like this unspoken thing that everyone knows about, but everyone no one knows talks a jingle. about. Yeah, but no one talks about it. So anyways, I thought it was like, it definitely changed my life in terms of like how I saw everything in the in the fitness world. So it was me, a huge, it, it made a huge, difference in one kid's life. Oh, thank you, I appreciate that. It was yeah. a huge icebreaker for a lot of guys. Yeah. They'd bring their girlfriend or some dudes would like bring their parents to it and they were like, yeah, like, yeah. What did you think? And it was like parents... an icebreaker to them to say, like, by the way, I'm yeah, on yeah. TRT or whatever. Yeah, by the way, I do some of that stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, now TRT, I feel like, has been really very normalized. It's everywhere. Yeah, just like, just normal, like, 100 milligram a week guys who, like, they tested the levels, they're low, and they just take the, the TRT. 100 milligram a week guy. That's like, that sounds like a shirt. Yeah. Like, I'm a 100 milligram a week guy. <laughs> Maybe you should, yeah, you should have, 100 like, just 100 mg. Just 100 mg. Yeah. That's it. Um, is that what launched Slingshot? Steroids? <laughs> no. Uh, the uh, documentary. Oh, it definitely helped. You know, yeah. the documentary came out in. Uh, the documentary came out. I'm trying to even piece it all together. Yeah. The documentary definitely helped. It, it, it helped. Uh, you know, when I went to trade shows and stuff like that, I was recognized. Yeah. Um, walking in here. But the inter but the internet, like yeah. it, the internet as we know it now, it didn't happen yet. Yeah. Instagram wasn't even a thing. No, there was no Instagram. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't really Facebook at the time. There was like MySpace. Yeah. Facebook, I think, was like coming around, but yeah. not everybody had it, kind of thing. Um, so yeah, just the the movie made a difference. Yeah. But like when people came and they were talking to me about the slingshot, yeah. they knew me a little bit more because I was powerlifting, and they definitely knew powerlifting from the movie. Yeah. So it was like direct and a little indirect. Yeah. But I had a YouTube channel going like for many many years since yeah. 2000. As soon as YouTube was a thing, yeah. I had a YouTube channel going on from the very beginning, and that helped a lot too. Is that your primary channel, or is podcast the primary channel? The podcast is, is a primary channel now, just because of, this, of, this, of the rate of growth. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. how that is. Like, yeah. I'm sure you have businesses like where they're, they do great, and they, they bring in a consistent amount, yeah. but your focus is, your time is on some of these other ones that are yeah. uh, just launching High like potential. Yeah. faster. Yeah, the potential's greater. Yeah. yeah. So that's where most of my uh, most of my time is spent more on the podcast. Domain. Yeah, we just started focusing on our podcast more like, I mean, the last six months, and it's I mean it's paid off. Like it's it's interesting because like I like YouTube and podcast of all the platforms the most, even though we crank out a lot of short form. Because um, like to me, like a single download it means so much more to me than like an impression. You know what I mean? Because like you mm -hmm. get you know 12 minutes to somebody like that's right. so much to me. It's so much more meaningful than like a they saw a thumbnail. And that was it. Or they saw two seconds. You know, it's hard to right. it's hard to help anybody do anything in in a, one second or an impression. Like a headline's not going to change someone's life. I think if you if you think about like you know why someone would want to watch a podcast from you, yeah. a podcast from me, podcast from all these different people, right? Yeah. Um, maybe some of us are starting to overlap, and maybe yeah. we're starting to say the same thing. I think I heard a stat. There's like a few million podcasts right now. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like they went they exploded, right? They're yeah. all over the place. But what's unique about it is that your audience is going to want to hear more from you. Yeah. My audience is going to want to hear more from you. When we have crossover, yeah. they could very well be like, holy shit, Alex is dope, man. I'm going to check out yeah. more of his stuff. Yeah. And then they, they, they cross over into some of the other ones. But I think what is also cool is that you get to bring in the unique people that you think are important for your yeah. listeners to hear from. Yeah. And I get to do the same thing. And so the, all the shows are way different. Yeah. They're never the same. The podcasts are never the same. And it's, um, we talk about this on like on a marketing angle for like paid ad stuff, even for our companies, like the avatar of who we're representing in like the advertisements we're making. And it's like, even if we have two businesses that are like in the same niche, right? Like we have two accounting firms, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you have two different avatars that are being spoken to, even the psychographics, like you could have two white dudes, right? I mean, fundamentally we're both two white dudes as the spokespeople but have two very different messages and value systems, not that we're that different, but like right. two different ways of seeing the world and it will resonate very differently. You know what I mean? Like you've got Black Rifle Coffee on one side and you've got like Starbucks. Right. And like both appeal to like upper echelon white folks. Even but on like, the same block, you what, got, yeah, you got Phil's Coffee and yep. Starbucks, right? Flex you out. Trying to grow up and be like you, man. Hey, can I get a picture? I gotta be that guy. Dude, let's get the let's guy get, that uh, keeps you. The guy that keeps you here an extra half an hour because he asks for a picture. So this one, I don't know if you've ever used this thing, but for whatever reason, 
it just feels right. It doesn't hurt my wrists, it doesn't hurt my elbows, and it just like, it just feels right. This is the key to how you make a lot of money, is this tricep piece right here? This is literally everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, I tell people all the time, they're like, do I run ads? I'm like, no, you do no, tricep push downs. build your fucking triceps, you pussy. Yeah. <laughs> it just like, feels great. Do any sports growing up? Yeah. Uh, wrestling, tennis, and Gymnastics? soccer. Gymnastics? Martial arts? Just um, wrestling. Uh, I was a goalie and uh, tennis. Oh, that's insane. Yeah, those were my three. But all the guys I know who did gymnastics all like are freaks. Right? I think they have this like kinesthetic awareness that you get when you're a kid and they always like keep it. Like they have immediate form when they start sports. It's like a base athleticism. I, I don't know if you, I love these things. That feels really good. Yeah, I like that. So I don't want to say this, but uh, I'm going to go down and wait because uh, it just feels Actually, so good. Actually, I felt that a lot. It felt really good. It's a good movement. people to follow through on the stuff that you say you're gonna do so if you know going into the gym that you might be short on time then if you wrote down a couple exercises to do that day cross a few of them off before you even get inside the gym so that way you don't feel like you had an incomplete workout and on the other side of that is like just try to make sure you got enough time to get all your shit in so you can always follow through we've been in here for a while today and we've uh, we stopped a couple times and it could have been easy just to ditch this last movement, but it's like, no, why not just follow through on what we say we're gonna do? Nice. Yeah, there's something to that angle, you're right. Yeah, I know, like it's the, it's like the accessory I always wish I had. Like there's something about your wrist being pulled yeah, it's that the, way. Yeah, it's this, and it like, it like really cradles it. Yeah. I don't even, there's no brand on it. I would, I would tell people about it, but I, there's no brand. Um, yeah, it just feels good. Because the, the rolly one... Some guy just like bent a bar that yeah. way. He's like, fuck it. I'm yeah, because the, the, the round ones, you're always kind of like finding your spot. And then like, I do like straps a lot. You know, I wrap it around my wrist. Right. I like those. But this yeah, still... Yeah, very comfortable on the wrist. Yeah, this just feels... That one feels good. It feels like, I know it sounds weird. It feels like a quad extension. I, like, I don't know, that makes no sense, but... Makes sense. I feel more connected to it. <sighs> There's a girl over there with a shirt that says, fuck fat. Where? where? It's amazing. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, a little cutaway. That one, that shot, that shot. Oh. There it is. Nice. Nice. Woo. Feels like it's getting way back in here. Oh yeah. I like, I don't like, I love this. I love this exercise. Like, I feel like I work the muscle. Like right. I'm, you know, squeezing it.
How long have you been training a little bit like this for? Years. A couple years? years. Handful of years? Five Honestly, years, ten when years? I did, when, I, when he was talking about the Greg Knuckles thing, right. that's when I started doing this. Greg or kind yeah. of you guys thought about yeah. it together? He was just talking to me about uh, daily training for the same muscles and how it like made you stronger and build more muscle. And I was like, oh, that sounds good. And also like just filling up on glycogen, right? Yeah, I mean, totally. building out those glycogen stores, getting that muscle pump. So that was like, I started training this way and I had a big breakthrough in my like size. So I had done like powerlifting, five by fives, mad cow, um, <laughs> you know, three, two, one. Like, you know, I had done all the standard, you know, jug, jug method, I'd done all those ones. And I had gotten pretty strong. Like that was after, I, right after, right as I was competing. You did the mad cow workout. Yeah, Matt, was that what it, is that called? I don't know. I uh, thought it was called mad cow. Probably, that's Is it called mad cow? I thought it was called mad cow. I don't know, it was like this five by five program. Ah, whatever. It sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I want to do it. It was an intermediate program by Ripito, or like an adaptive from right. Ripito stuff. Um, but then when I switched to daily training and went from sets of like, you know, five and eight to doing like seven sets of 15 to 20 every day, I got stronger and I got bigger. Mm. So I was like, this is the shit. Right. And then I pretty much just like, I stuck with that. Cause that was what broke me through the uh, 200 barrier. Mm. Like I couldn't get past 200 pounds, like personal body weight. And then that, I, I got to 220. Shit. And that was what, that was like my big breakthrough. I was, and I, I didn't. When you was, ate that many carbs, you probably cut down on your fat a little bit, right? Oh, it, it was, it was supposed to oh, be yeah, zero. Oh yeah, it was really, fat. really low, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it was only trace. But there's gonna be 30 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from like oatmeal sauce fat yeah, in it, yeah. you know? Show you something over here with yeah. your trap. Might be able to do it right here. Which, yeah, whatever side hurts. Uh huh. Go ahead and put that on there. Right just like mess around, yeah. Like, and let me know, like, if, if it feels like shit, it feels like shit. But it, yeah, it might. Oh, yeah, it feels like a needle or a knife. So when when there's, I mean, you know some of this stuff, but like, when yeah. there's injuries in there, the, the fascia yeah. gets mangled. Yeah. And it will, unfortunately, it will never repair. Yeah. It won't repair with stretching, it won't repair with strengthening, unless you like unmangle it. Uh, so we uh, got strengthen, lengthen, and smash, and this is the smashing. This is the smashing? But that's a really easy movement that you can get to. Yeah. You can even get into the back of it, you know, if you turn around, you can, yeah, you can dig in. Yeah, well, yeah whatever, yeah, right whatever here. different ways. Or like, going here. And if something's real sketchy, you'll know. Yeah. Like, you'll be like, oh, that fucking hurts yeah. way too much. It's really one to ten. It's a nine. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, so that's great. a simple thing. No, I appreciate it. Do that maybe twice a week or something. Should be all fixed. Up. Lifters helping lifters. That's right. It's amazing workout. Thank you oh, so much. Oh no, dude. Thank you for encouraging me to work out and, and look like you. How old are you? Got to get Jack. Forty-five. Are you really? Really great. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you could step on stage now. Um, one of my heroes in bodybuilding is Milo Sharchev. Oh yeah. yeah Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I loved him because he was always, he was confident, he was always six weeks out. Yeah. And he trained all of his athletes to be oh, like that. Oh, he looked fucking crazy. He did 68 or whatever the record was, comp IPV Pro shows, because he never, wow. he never was in off season. He yeah. just like leaned out for six weeks, just, you know, got his hydration and whatnot, but he just. I, what I always loved about him is he talked about everybody else being fat. He was talking about other bodybuilders. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah that guy's fat. And you're like, the guy's he was like, savage, yeah. the guy's like 11% body fat. You're like, he's not fat. He was so aesthetic. He was, he was one of the top five for me. I loved his physique. I still yeah. do love his physique. You know what I mean? Mike Menser had a crazy physique. Remind me of like similar, just 100%. different era, you know? Yep. Right? I love Menser's physique. So funny because totally different training methodologies. Right. Yeah, because Milos, I got some of my stuff from Milos too, like the giant sets. Right. So like if I if I didn't work out at a gym like this, because like in Austin, I had a commercial gym that I just kind of like, yeah, I just had my own gym. Um, and I would just set up like my whole workout like we did. I would set the whole thing up. Shit. And then I would just no break, and I would do seven rounds, yeah. and then die, <laughs> and then simply pass out on the floor in a puddle. That shit felt time. really good, man. That's like invigorating. Like I, I, I really like that a lot. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know, it's worked for me. There's something too, like just uh, like I like doing full body stuff. It's mm -hmm. pretty, 
normal for me to do that kind of stuff. But I don't really hang out on the machines as much, and it was like, just kind of brought me back. I'm like, I should hang out on the machines more. Yeah. They're simple, they're easy, they're quick. Quick yeah. hitter, get your pump. It's get easy to get there. my, uh, like you said, like lie to yourself. Like if I'm like, I gotta do calves and then hamstring curls to like ease into banded leg press or like a squat pro right. or something like I'm like, well, let me just do the first two and I'll see how I feel. And then I'm like, ah, fuck, I might as well. You know what I mean? I'm here, I'm pumped, right. I'll go do it. And so that's like, I don't know. It's like, I feel like every, you know, I've been doing it not as long as you, but long enough to, know how, to years, yeah. know how to fool myself into it. All right, had an amazing workout with Alex Ramosi. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It was great to get to know you a lot better. It was his first time meeting in person, so it was epic. It was awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming out. Like, honored to work out with the great and uh, just in awe of how you look and how you train. And honestly, like on a character level, like you we were saying at the end, you guys will see um, just how much of an impact you made on the industry. Like there's not many people who have been in it so long, helped so many people and have like almost a universally good reputation. Um, and you have that. Oh, and thank you, uh, I appreciate that. No, it's cool. I mean, it impacted my life. When I told you I was in college, I saw bigger, stronger, faster, and it completely changed the way I saw everything. My goals, my thank aspirations, you. everything. And so like, it shifted this 18 to 20 year old's life, so. Awesome, now that's all that's left is for you to come out to super training in Sacramento. Well, now that I know it's free, now I'm, now I'm much, you know, I'm much more, <laughs> otherwise I was like, oh, no, 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 pay the day pass. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get you there at some point. Uh, a fellow meathead millionaire, there's uh, more and more of us all the time because of people like you who like are you. giving out information. He's giving out some great information. I'm talking to people about being Jack. He's teaching people how to make a lot more money. Just watch his Instagram. Just watch some of the posts that he's got. He's got your YouTube channel. You're starting a podcast and you also yeah. have a book coming out, right? Yep. When's the book going to come out? Uh, in the next, it'll probably be the next six months-ish is kind of what I'm, as long as everything goes right, that's what it should be. And you've had a podcast for a while, but yeah. you're trying to put more energy back into it yeah, again, right? Yeah, it's taken off the last six months. We've like, you know, started focusing on it and um, it's done really well, so we're really grateful. But it was cool because you're doing the same thing with Pocket. It's just such a deeper way. You're right. I mean, we love interacting with everyone and hopefully providing value and it's like the best way we can really shift beliefs and teach a couple things that, you know, we learn along the way. Strength is never weakness, weakness never strength. Catch you guys later.